Well, praise the Lord. I told you we'd be back. To God be all the glory, great things he has done and continue to do. Listen, this is Dr. Kilafo Kali thanking you again for joining us for another Kingdom Come Now broadcast. That is the name. Hallelujah. And I'm so delighted to welcome you to Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. That's right, in the beautiful city of Freeport, Bahamas. And it is a joy and a great delight to be with you again. I want to let you know that it was about one little over a year that we joined forces and uh, came here live. And we have just expanded. Thank you for all of you who have continued in the journey and who have continued to minister and share and pray. Thank you for your prayers, your thoughtfulness, your gifts, your intercession, your your love, that means so much to Shalewa and I. We are so delighted to, to be with you. And thank you for having us in your home, in your life, in your car, wherever you are listening and watching this on one of our global platforms around the world. We give the Lord glory, honor, and praise. We're going to start out this morning uh, with the uh, opening prayer. And I'm going to ask you, if you find this ministry is good, just like and share it. <laughs> Praise God. I know you're going to be blessed. I'm going to call my dollar wife. I'm telling you, what a wonderful blessing in the kingdom of God she is to me and to the work and to the life of what God is doing. I I'm telling you, it's a joy working with her. And I know she's praying as she works with me. But again, we thank you. We love you. Listen here. I need you. And I'm not going to just say anything out of thin air. I really have a message today. We're going to be talking about the atmosphere, the glory, and the culture of walking in the kingdom, the lifestyle of the kingdom, how to generate the glory of God over your lives. Hallelujah. If this ministry is blessing you, please come on and be a part. I'm going to call Shalewa to come, and she's going to open us up in prayer, and she's going to read the scripture and tell you a little bit about the ministry, what we're doing, what we're planning and a little bit about these wonderful things, books we have here. She's just coming to bless your life. I pray you worship already because we just took the time to just worship and then come on. So please stick with us. Shalewa's going to come now. Thank you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So wonderful to have you joining us today from wow i see you from all over asia i'll just call the continent um some of that what i'm seeing we have persons from the caribbean we have persons from um africa asia uh europe god bless you usa canada god bless you so much we thank you for joining us welcome to our worship service today hallelujah i pray that this message today be a divine blessing um to you uh, get ready to be tremendously blessed in the Lord because of what uh, is going to take place. I tell you the truth, the Lord has deposited so much um, in us. And so today, um, man, we are just going to glorify the Lord with all that he has taught us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us begin. Hallelujah. In prayer, Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We worship you. Hallelujah. This morning in spirit and in truth. We thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you for being a merciful God. We thank you for being a God who is just. We thank you for being a God who keeps us, who sustains us, who sustains us. We thank you for being a God who loves us, who shows us love. We thank you for being a God who has shown us, hallelujah, that we, hallelujah, can walk in the blessings and all of the promises hallelujah of God this morning we thank you Lord God that we are alive and well we thank you Lord God that even on our bed oh God for those who are on their bed of sickness and infirmity Lord God you still shall be the joy of their strength father and we thank you and speak over them now even as you commanded Lord God to heal the sick we declare healing over them and their bodies right now in the name of Jesus, a whole healing, Lord God, that only you can provide through the power of your Holy Spirit. 
We thank you, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Rapha this morning, Lord God. There is no distance, Lord God, in prayer. And your word said that you sent your word to heal them, Lord God, physically, literally, and spiritually, Lord God. So we declare healing over them right now. Father, for all of those who are watching, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you touch them in a very special way. Hallelujah, this morning, Lord God. Let them feel it, uh, your redemption, Lord God, this morning. Let them, Lord God, feel cleansed. Let them feel renewed. Let them be re-strengthened, Lord God, this morning. Let them be inspired and motivated, Lord God, by no one else, Lord God, but by you and the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. Father, we pray this morning that th wherever this broadcast, Lord God, is being aired and wherever it will be aired on a later time, Lord God, that your glory fill that place, Lord God. Because we know that no darkness can dwell amongst your glory, Father. And so we bind every attack of the enemy. We bind every cyber attack, backlash, backlash attack and retaliation now in the mighty name of Jesus. We release your angels now, Lord God, your warfare angels. So go forward now in the name of Jesus and protect, Lord God, the soul, Lord God, the heir of these persons, Lord God, who are watching and even this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare this place of glory realm. We declare, Lord God, that this place is a place of prayer and worship, Lord God, glorifying you, glorifying our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray that your power will be felt, Lord God. We declare that your mercy, Lord God, will be given unto such that require your mercy. Hallelujah this morning in the name of Jesus. And Father, for this we won't stop to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that you are so worthy of. We pray for the one, Lord God, who is going to deliver your word this morning, Lord God. May you touch him, Lord God, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. May your anointing, Lord God, that is upon him, your anointing, Lord God, break and destroy every yoke. In the mighty name of Jesus, in his life and in the life of those who are watching and hearing. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Father, for this we won't stop to give you the praise. We won't stop to give you the glory and the honor that you are so worthy of. And for this we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your holy and precious name, Lord God. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors, Lord God. Lead us not into temptation, Lord God, where our weaknesses, Lord God, will be made bare, O oh God, and we'll be tempted against the enemy, Lord God, but deliver us from all evil. Help us to remain strong and powerful in you, that evil cannot overcome us, Lord God, or oh, come near our dwelling place. For yours is the kingdom, for yours is the power, for yours is the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Somebody say, hallelujah, amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just have that song in my spirit. And truly blessed be the name of the Lord. He is so worthy. Hallelujah to be praised this morning. I just want to read a main scripture passage that we are focused on. This morning, taken from Romans chapter 14, our main scripture passage for highlight is 17, but we are going to read from 12. Let us read from 12 to 17 this morning. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this, rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Wow, it's powerful. I know and I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be spoken of 
Sorry, let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Glory be to the name of the Lord for emphasis. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are to be careful in everything, especially us who are a part of the kingdom of God, um, not to offend. We are to be careful, hallelujah, what we emphasize and pay too much attention and, 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 um, and broadcast, so to speak. Amen. Because sometimes we are, quote unquote, bigging up or giving attention to the wrong thing that doesn't deserve attention. Uh, for instance, let us talk about an example that uh, many of the fathers uh, in the past who would have given uh, sometimes, hallelujah, if you drive your car, amen, you drive your car, you know that you didn't put any gas, hallelujah, in the car because you say, you're, oh, let me just stop here and, and there uh, quickly and then I'm going to go to the gas station. What if you decide to pass the gas station, make this stop because you're in such a hurry, uh, then go back to the gas station and you run out of gas? It is not the devil's fault. You cannot uh, curse the devil and bring attention to it uh, because it's not the devil's fault. It is your fault. Amen? We ought to be careful in our action, especially when it comes to one another uh, being a part of the kingdom of God. And we are focused and to know and to believe what we say that the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Then everything around us, everything we are a part of, will exude these perfect qualities. And even though, uh, yes, now this would be the enemy, would try to bash and say all kind of negative things about you because you have joy, you have peace. Amen. He still will be defeated because you are in and operating in the kingdom. So blessed be the word of the Lord this morning. Thank you all again uh, for watching our Kingdom Come Now broadcast. It is such a joy to have you here with us uh, this morning. It is a true joy. And we just encourage you to pray uh, for us and with us as this broadcast is being aired. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to highlight uh, for some, for many of you, re-highlight and for those introduced to you, our trilogy uh, that we actually, we have been working on these books for over a year. These books were ready um, actually from August, from the middle of last year, um, the manuscripts and everything. But we wanted it to be refined. We wanted to pray and hear uh, from the Lord to see, Lord, uh, what is it? Is there anything else that you want us to take out? Is there anything that you want us to add? Is there any uh, thing, Lord God, you want us to emphasize a little more? Uh, the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I am telling you, and so by the end of last year, we were ready to go, but we just wanted to pray and hear uh, from the Lord when we were to do our official um, launch and being obedient. For many years, this was in um, the making, but we really, really wanted to hear from the Lord in this. And so we were able uh, to la launch earlier this year to just uh, branch out and to release the, our book, The Kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah to you. So if you haven't received these books yet, we encourage you to go to www.kingdomtrilogy.com. And if not uh, Kingdom Trilogy, you can go to Amazon to get it, or you can even contact us if you are here locally. And let me tell you, these books, as you can see, the glory, I feel the glory every time I look and go through these books, are uh, such beautiful, beautiful layout, beautiful topics. If you can, uh, for those of you who have already received your copy, take a look and uh, you can re-emphasize, amen, how beautiful it is and how you have been blessed because we have been getting many, many reviews. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't done so yet. The kingdom, the power, 
and the glory by yours truly and Apostle Dr. Kalafa Pali. Don't let those uh, in the African continent uh, take you over in reading these books and being blessed. From reading these books, you are positioning yourself further into walking in the kingdom, knowing your position, knowing your role in the kingdom, demonstrating uh, the kingdom and telling others, and not only telling others, but bringing others into the kingdom. It talks about every aspect, royalty, uh, you being a son of God. Uh, it talks about your relationship uh, with Christ. Everything uh, that you need is right here in these books. We have taken the time, and no doubt you are truly going to be blessed. And so without further uh, do this morning, we want to get right into the message. We have already prayed, we have already worshipped, and we know that the Lord is going to do something powerful in your lives uh, this morning. I want to invite you all to like and share, uh, because so much is going to happen and take place, amen, in your bedroom, in your front room, hallelujah, in your car, wherever you are this morning. Uh, the Lord is going to show up in such a mighty and powerful and special, special way. Like and share and just pray with us. Amen. And let us just uh, leave room for the Lord to just move and have his way in our midst this morning by his holy and precious name. And to him be all the honor and the glory. Let us welcome Apostle Polly as he comes before you to deliver the word. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the power of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord move through him, that the Lord may be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you, and I will see you again uh, during the broadcast. Amen. Receive Apostle Corey. Hallelujah. the name of Jesus. So delighted to have you here. Father, we just bless you. Father, we just praise you. Father, we just honor you for you are amazing and we just love you. We love you, Lord. We just bask in your glory and we just bask in your presence and we just bask in your grace and we just thank you for your glory here. Thank you that the name of Jesus is exalted. That the power of heaven is exalted in here. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth. So let it be as it is in heaven. And Father, we won't stop to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm delighted to be with you. Let's just, just jump straight into the word. I want to just shout out a few of you uh, that is that are watching Deepak. Ah, son in the gospel, hallelujah, Simon, hallelujah, Lacal. God bless you. Some others are on there. Rose, God bless you. Evangelist John Carty, God bless you. Lachey, hallelujah. Prophetess Charlene Kinlock, and, and so many of you others who are here liking and joining, just stay with me because we're going to get the word moving very quickly. Shalewa, I thank you, darling, for that wonderful prayer and introduction. And again, I want to ask you all, we, we, are, we have done, personally, about six books on the kingdom of God. This is four here, and it is powerful. Rose, God bless you. The kingdom experience heaven on earth. You have to get this book. It's powerful. You know, Shalewa and I have been experiencing the power of heaven on the earth. I don't care where you're from. I don't care if it's a pandemic or not. We have not been stuck, touched, or stopped by a pandemic. Praise God. We've been tremendously blessed. In fact, we wrote and finished this during the pandemic. Man, we are so blessed in the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is faithful. We're applying His Word. And I'm telling you, we're seeing the results. Uh, again, the power of God. Experience heaven's authority. Listen, I'm going to be teaching from these books. 
These are Amazon. We made history, and I'm not ashamed to say it. We did the largest uh, single production of the message of the kingdom. This book came from Matthew 6, the kingdom of God, when Jesus said, uh, uh, Seeking first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. But it's also from the Lord's prayer. We've unlocked by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the Lord had us unlock the secrets of the Lord's prayer, and it has transformed our lives. And people have been buying this around the world and have been truly changed. This is the power of God. We talk about healing, supernatural miracles. I'm telling you, you're going to have to live by supernatural miracles. You can't just live a normal life. You have to live supernaturally. And yeah, I'm a medical science. I've been trained as a physician to think empirically, and I do it. But I know there's a realm that is greater than just the natural realm. It's called the supernatural realm. It's called the invisible realm. And I want to teach you how to tap into the supernatural realm to pull in some things in your lives. It's going to bless you. Just stay on here. I might have time to teach a little bit of that. It's called the power of God. Experience heaven's authority. Then we have the glory of God. I'm going to be teaching a lot out of this today. Experience heaven's wealth and prosperity. And this is kingdom, the kingdom part two. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to deal with that a little later on. But I want to thank you. Shalewa's going to come again one minute, and we're going to just do some housekeeping things. I love you. Father, I pray. Now get ready. I'm getting ready to pray. If you have any family members, loved ones who need a supernatural healing, our, our ministry is based on the supernatural. Our, the kingdom is not in word only, but it's a demonstration of power. And we believe in power. We pray for people and seeing them healed supernaturally. We pray for people who have seen them delivered supernaturally by the oppression of Satan and demonic strongholds. We have prayed for people that have their lives, addictions, and struggles, and warfare broken. So Leo and I have prayed around the nations, laid hands on people, and they supernaturally receive the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in tongues that has sealed their faith. And now they're praying in tongues and producing power. Praise God. So we believe in the supernatural power of God. Hallelujah. And I pray in the Holy Spirit. It's been over. Hallelujah. 25 years I began to pray in the Holy Spirit. Let me get it right. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. 25 years praying the power of the Holy Spirit. It helped me through school, college, life, professionally. I know about the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit's power, you need help today. You need an infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to gather around because I'm going to pray quickly and then we're going to study the Word. I promise you, if you stay to the end, you won't be disappointed. Amen. I'm doing a dual thing here. I'm doing live, but I'm also doing for a global audience on the three networks, international channels. We're on um, Kingdom Inside out of uh, uh, Toronto. And also um, Dominion TV out of Carolinas, Brother Dutton there. And also, praise God, Power and Glory TV. We are on a number of TV that reach around the world. So pray with us as we try to do both of these today to be a blessing again. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the thanks and we give you the praise and we give you the glory. And we give you the honor and we give you the reverence. Hallelujah. I feel your glory. Somebody's watching and you need a touch. I am, yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There is someone experiencing some neck stiffness. I, I just see it in the back of the neck. Wherever you are, whether on live or you're going to be watching this, wherever you are, in your house, in your home, or your bed, the Lord is healing, hallelujah, a slip this in your neck. You've been trying to get it checked out. You've been having severe pains. And you're just afraid. You don't know what it is. But the Lord said, right now, if you step out on faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the maker and creator of this body, you will receive supernatural healing in your neck. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone watching. Hallelujah. Someone is watching. You've been having these palpitations, this racing heart. I see it. Yes, you young lady. You have a racing heart. The Lord said, I am healing you today. I am healing you today. If that's you, just say amen. The Lord is healing irregular heartbeats, palpitation, and hallelujah. I want you to go get it checked out. 
Because after you check it out, it's going to be gone. The Lord is going to heal you. The doctors are going to do their tests and ECGs and whatever's needed. But there will be a supernatural healing in your body. In your body. Somebody, by word of knowledge, by the Holy Spirit, somebody's believing God for their toddler child. Hallelujah. Your child has been uh, dealing with a health issue. And you came on, if that's you, just let us know. The Lord is getting ready to heal. It's a young boy, about five, five or six years old. Hallelujah. The Lord is getting ready to heal your toddler. And he's going to wipe away that disease that the doctors said was, you know, unable, they were unable to diagnose what's going on. The Lord is healing you right now. Healing you right now. I declare that a miracle comes to you. I declare that a miracle comes to your life. I, I speak it now, not only as a man, I speak under the unction of the Holy Spirit that a miracle is about to happen over the next hour. A miracle is about to break forth into your life. Hallelujah. Not by my might, not by my power, but by the Spirit of the living God, whatever miracle that is, as you've been trusted in the Lord, I come in agreement with you. Shalera, our ministry kingdom apostolic, and our leaders around the world, we come together by faith with you today under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we speak faith into your life. And you believe, that you believe, that you believe, and that you receive, and you believe, and that you receive your miracle. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we thank you. Thank you. Get ready. Share this like this. Share this quickly because I'm going to dive into the word. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. Now what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. And I'm watching this here. Praise God. Father, now bless your word like only you can. Anoint my lips. Anoint my ears. Anoint my eyes. Anoint my thinking. Let all of you and none of me. Father, we declare that the name of Jesus is exalted. Father, we declare today that by the Spirit of the living God, you teach. For you are a teacher. You are a revealer of all things. Unlock your word to us today. And let us never be the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone type glory. Somebody type glory. If you, I dare you to type glory. I want you to participate. Yes, be Hallelujah. Amen, Rose. I declare you to, to participate and type glory. Some things are going to be prophetic, so stay on. I might tell you to just shout. When the Lord says shout, shout, because in the shouting is your miracle. I might tell you to clap your hands wherever you are. I want you to clap wherever you are, because when you clap, you're striking the enemy. You're defeating the enemy. I might tell you, praise God, to, to type glory glory or something. Just obey the Lord. There you go. Just obey the Lord because in obeying the Lord, Elizabeth, hallelujah, my family, you you all who are watching, Elizabeth, come about your family. God bless you. Ginpu, son from India. Irma, God bless you. God bless you. Good to see all of you coming on. Just come on in and just be blessed today. Hallelujah. Shaleva, I need you just for a minute. Let's jump into the word of the Lord this morning. I love you all. This morning, we I sent out a message that uh, we're going to be talking about. Let me pull this up here. Yeah. Uh, my darling wife is just going to check this here. Praise God. We're just checking our sound and our music. Just leave that just a little bit on our air. Hallelujah. I'm going to just sing this one. That's perfect. Play that up a little louder. Oh, oh, oh. You're all I want. Hallelujah. You're all I ever needed. You're all I want. If you know that song, sing with me. Help me know you. Worship the Holy Spirit as we wait for Him. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Sing to the Lord, 
something's about to happen powerful. Help me know you. waiting on the presence of the Lord. Where have you are, just lift up your hands and just you're all have ever needed. You're all I want. Oh, help me know you are near. If you just worship Help me know you are I feel an unusual glory of the presence of the Lord upon me and in this place and this studio today. Thank you. I, I feel that that glory is extending out wherever you are listening and watching. That glory is flowing upon your life. It's coming into your home. It's coming into your workplaces. It's coming across your computers. It's coming across your television platform. It's coming in across your Apple and your Android phones. I just feel the presence of the Lord. It's, a, it's, it's the presence of the Lord that gives peace, that surpasses all understanding. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of fear, in the midst of death all around us in every nation and every place on the earth. It's so good to know that we have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, the joy unspeakable. If you love him just for a minute or two, just go ahead and just worship him. Irma, that's it. Um, Irma, Nurse Max, D, God bless you. We just lost Brother Strong, and they're a young brother in the Lord. And every time this happens, I realize how fleeting life is. No matter what we are, no matter what we've done, life is slipping into eternity. And, and only what we do for Christ will really last. Only what we do, only our worship, only our praises unto Him, only our sacrifice unto Him, only our lives. Dedicated unto him will mean anything when it's all over. just 60 more seconds. I know I have a teaching of the word, but I just want to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. He is a real person. He is here with us. I want to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I want to acknowledge the presence of the word of God in our midst. I just want to worship with you. I'm not here to shout at you. I'm not here to scream at you, but I, I want us to have an encounter with the Lord because some of you and I need a supernatural healing. We need a healing of our hearts. We need uh, a touch from the Lord. I'm just tired of all of the teaching and the, all of the ministry and the fighting and the bickering. I just need the presence of the Lord to just anoint me and just break every yoke and destroy every chain and destroy every distress and destroy the sleeplessness and destroy the tension and destroy the stress of life. I just need him to come in and lift the heavy burden. I just need him to lift the pain. I need him to massage my heart. I need him to touch my emotion. I just need a break. If that's you, if that's you, you just need a break. I just need a break. I know it's wonderful things happening, but in the midst of all that wonderful things, I just need a break. I just need to rest. I just need to breathe. I just need to just, just get away for a moment. And, and I know I can't go anywhere. So the only experience I have to give me a peace and a breakthrough and a lifting of the burden is through the presence of the Lord. The Bible said the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Jesus came and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, Luke 4, to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted. Wherever you are, if you're brokenhearted right now, he's here to heal you, Elizabeth. Hallelujah. To set the captive free, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, to mend the broken heart. Because every day we are seeing death. We're seeing death. 
the rich, the poor, hallelujah. Whether in our own community, whether in our own workplace, or Prince Philip, the rich, the poor, the black, the white are not escaping the cause of the pain of life. DMX, 74 million albums around the world, but yet when death came knocking on his door, at age 50, he is out of this life and into eternity. Oh, we need the presence of the Lord. people 
You think about Buckingham Palace, you think about law, you think about colonial, you think about, you know, the proper language and a certain dress style. If I say New York City, you think about the same thing. So culture is, it, it is, is the characteristics of all of those things that make up a people. I want to talk about the culture of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has a culture. I have a few scriptures here. You have to stay with me. Because, you know, for many years, I used to get upset and angry until Jesus taught me there is a kingdom culture. There's a culture. There's an atmosphere. There's a, 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 a realm. There's a place of glory that, that, that the kingdom of God brings. And that when you and I enter the kingdom of God, even though we are on earth, we enter into something real. Oh, my goodness. you got to stay with me today. Please stay with me. Pray with me, Elizabeth. Keep those points moving. Thank you, Liz. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Jesus said the first thing you must understand in the, the kingdom of God and the culture of God is that we don't worry. Praise God. If you are a kingdom believer, if you are a believer of Christ Jesus, if you have come into his kingdom, you don't worry. Man, I can't tell you the last time I worried about what to eat, what you should drink, or what you should wear, or your body. Praise God. I mean, people spend hours worrying. If that's you, we're going to break that today. I mean, people, some people today is Sunday. They're not enjoying today because they're worried about tomorrow. What they're going to wear. What they're going to buy for lunch. What meat they're going to take out this afternoon to cook. They're worried about their schedule on Wednesday. They're worried about their meetings on Friday. They're worried about what's due next week, Saturday. I'm telling you, praise God, there's been a pandemic and I just trusted the kingdom of the Lord. I trusted Jesus that he is Lord, he is Savior, and he said he will meet all of my needs. It's an insult to worry in the kingdom of God. Point number one, it's an insult to worry in the kingdom of God. Secondly, it's an insult to worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. Thirdly, it's an insult to worry about your body, your health. Praise God. Fourthly, it's an insult in Jesus' kingdom to be concerned about what you're going to put on. And he said, it's not life more than these things. Why? Verse 26, Matthew 26 and 26. Jesus said, behold, the fowls of the air. They don't sow, neither do they reap, neither do they, neither do they gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feed them. Are you not much Are you not much better than they? I want to let you know, praise God, I've never seen a roach worry about what they're going to eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you get up through the middle of the night, and there a roach is. Hallelujah. I'm not talking your business, but some of you and I, Hallelujah, you get up through the night and there is a little roach. He's not worrying about what he's drinking. I didn't see that roach laid out saying, oh my God, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to put on? Oh my goodness, a storm is coming. In fact, I'm wondering, Carl, where the roaches went during Hurricane Dorian. I mean, the ants are out there. I'm, you know, my wife, we just sprayed outside. And she wants me to get some, you know, seven dust to sprinkle around. And I said, babe, don't you worry about that. We can spray the yard every week. The ants are coming back. There's nothing we can do about the ants. Hallelujah. The ants are going to find their way. They don't worry. They don't fret. They're not disturbed. The Heavenly Father feeds them. And even in a storm and in a tornado and in flooding, I don't know where they go. But all I know is after the storm here, they come out again. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, it's an insult because I take care of animals. I take care of trees. I'm looking at a name tree right here out of this window. And this name tree is an amazing name tree. Uh, uh, is that a name? We had a name. Yes. Am I saying the right name? Moranga. Sorry. We had a name. It was a Moranga tree. And I'm telling you, that Moranga tree ran through Hurricane Dory. And it is blossoming now beautifully. I mean, it stood the test of time. 
And now it is back stronger than ever before. Jesus said, don't you know, I take care of the flowers. I take care, I mean, and none of them worry. I don't see a bird going to the bar drinking because it's stressed out. Hallelujah. I don't see the, you know, the lizards going to get a marijuana joint to smoke, smoke because they are stressed out. I don't see the dogs, the cat. I mean, they find food. They find shelter. Hallelujah. The Lord provides for them. And the fish are just out there swimming with no problem. They have no worries. It's only humans that have a culture of worry, of fear, of, of, of disbelief in the Father's provision. Jesus said, Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns. The fowl, the birds, they don't plant anything. They don't harvest anything. They don't build their own homes. But yet, Carissa, God bless you, that, that, that even though they don't do that, the Father feeds them. Are you not much more better than they? Jesus asks again. The first part he asks, is not your life more than this? And then he comes back again and says, now aren't you better than the birds? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubic to your height? Why take you thoughts for raiment? Why are you worrying about clothes? I'm telling you, I've gotten into this kingdom message and I've been transformed. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Let's skip down. Therefore, verse 31, Matthew 6 and 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or what you shall be clothed with. But all these things, after all these things, the Gentiles see. Yes, Dr. Corley, are you saying I should not worry? I just lost my job due to the pandemic. I just lost my income. My, my spouse lost uh, half of his income. My children can't get off the of school anymore. My plans have changed. My life has changed. I'm stuck in a job. I can't travel. I can't go to eat. This thing is going uh, uh, so extreme. I have questions about the pandemic. I have questions about the immunization, the shot. What do I do? My life seems upside down. And you're coming here on TV. You're coming here online and telling me not to worry. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not me. Jesus said, take no thought. Why? Verse 32. For after all these things, the Gentile, the word Gentile means pagan, sinner, unbeliever. Praise God. I'm not telling you that Jesus is saying you are a pagan, you are a Gentile, you're a non-believer, you're an idol worshiper, you, you're, 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 you're religious and not faith-based. If you worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, he said, after these things, the heathen, the unbeliever seeks after these things, not kingdom people, not people who really trust the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know it's not easy. Sometimes it's hard. We, you know, <clears throat> we've been, we've built a culture. And I've found around the world, uh, between my wife and I, we've traveled over 60 plus nations. Uh, 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 and uh, we have seen across the world, some of you around the world are watching this. It doesn't matter the nation, the language, the tribe. There is a culture of worry around the world. There is a culture, black, white. Indian, mix, Hispanic, Native Indians, Native uh, uh, indigenous groups, uh, even in the jungles. It's an Adamic nature. It's, an, it's a nature that was placed upon us because Adam fell and from the fall of man, sin entered in. And worry is sin. Worry is a culture. You know, there are some people I know, they have a culture of worry. They have a culture of fear. They have a culture of, you know, uh, pleasing people. They have a culture of trying to impress everyone else. Come on, help me somebody. Y'all pray. If this is blessed, they have a culture. And I, I was like that. I used to worry a lot. Praise God. If the Lord spare my life, my birthday is on the 20th of this month. And I'm telling you, I'm excited. I don't, I don't worry about anything. I go to sleep and I rest. Praise God. I get up and I get up and I see the Lord provide everything I need. You know, you know that right now in the midst of a pandemic, there are trillions of dollars being transferred. 
There are billions of dollars being made. I was watching something yesterday in the crypto market exchange. There are billions of dollars being exchanged every day in the stock market. You know, stocks are still skyrocketing and billions are being made. New industries are being generated around the world. Praise God. Haven't you seen it? I mean, some people are making more money than they've ever made in their lives. And they're making it around the world. Praise God. I don't care where you're from. Uh, why? Why am I saying this? Because the Lord knows the earth has not lost its resources. The same trillions of dollars that were in the earth, the world's economy, uh, last year, January, before the pandemic hit, are still in the earth. They've just transferred hands. Praise God. They move from one industry to another industry. They move from maybe travel, but they've gone into sanitation products. They move from uh, cruise liners to uh, uh, in-home stay jobs. They, you know, the, the major companies, shipping companies have shot up. Uh, delivery services have shot up. Online presence have shot up. The same money. There is a transfer of wealth that's taking place in the world that's unprecedented. Glory to God. And the same fish is in the sea. Praise God. I'm so glad I live here in the Bahamas. You know, there's no other. I can throw my line out and I can catch fish and I can eat for days. There's no shortage of fish. Uh, there's no shortage of coconut. There's no shortage of cocoa plum. There's no shortage of mango and dilly. I saw my man Mangola tree full up with Mangolas. I can't wait for another few weeks. There's no shortage of hallelujah. Someone brought me some stone crab. There's no shortage. Thank you, Carissa. Jack, good to see you. There's no shortage of stone crab. Hallelujah. There's no shortage of lobster in the sea. There's no shortage of crab on Andres Island. Hallelujah. Uh, there's no shortage of goat, um, goat meat. There's no shortage of anything in the earth. The earth has the same amount of resources. And Jesus said, this is why I'm telling you. That's why it's an offense for you to be upset. There's an offense for you to have sleepless night. That's not the culture of the kingdom. How can you talk about the Lord and say you're in his kingdom and you're worried, you're beat down, you're depressed, you, you know, you're sleepless, you have you insomniac, you are just broken, you're worried, you're stressed, you're, you're grieved, you're troubled. And, and I'm telling you, you can't be a blessing to anyone because every day you wake up, you're miserable and tired. You go to bed and you toss and turn all night. And in the morning you go to the day and you can't help anybody. Praise God. Yes, backyard. There's enough resources there. There's no need to stress in God's kingdom. For after all these things, the Gentile, well, I told the Lord a few years ago, I'm not going to be a Gentile. I'm not going to be a pagan. I'm not going to be a sinner. I'm going to trust your word. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Do you mean to tell me the Father knows that I, I need to pay my rent? I need to pay my mortgage? I need to pay my school tuition? I need to pay my children's school fee? Yes, he knows. Because it's a culture when you enter the kingdom. Watch this. But Jesus said in the midst of a pandemic, I've been teaching this for years. Hallelujah. Again, I want to plug this in. Not because the books only go on Amazon. We did a series on the kingdom. There's four books, but we just launched three. It's my life. 20 plus years of study and work. We compress in these books. And I'm telling you, hallelujah. This was the kingdom. And he said, seek ye first. People wonder why this doctrine. Yes, people, have a good to see you. People ask, are you still practicing? Yeah, I go every day to work in the medical clinic. And I'm telling you, I'm in private practice. And I've seen God provide. I work consulting the government as well in, in one of their health care projects. And I'm telling you, I've seen the provision of the Lord. <clears throat> you know, I was working for, you know, the public hospital. And almost three years ago, the Lord told me, step out on faith. And I left that hospital and went to private, and I don't have a doubt in my day, in my life, about doing it. Praise God. I know folks thought, wow, this guy, you know, just in his 30s, just stepped out by faith. Hallelujah. To live what God called me to do, because I had a revelation of this. Now, I'm not saying every one of you can do it, but I'm just saying there is more that God has for you than worrying and laboring for 30 years. Can you imagine? 
I would have labored for 30 years for an organization. At the end of it, got a little pension and a little check and, and, and not even a, a citizen watch. Praise God. Some people spend 30 years pouring out their life in an organization, in an institution. And that's good. And that's what God called you to do. And I'm telling you, all they end up with is a Rolex watch. But when I stepped out on faith, why? I didn't just step out crazily. I began to trust God. Matthew 6 and 33. Why is this pastor doing it? Why do I, you know, go to a medical facility six days a week and still come here and teach the kingdom? Because I realized the greatest thing in all the world that Jesus taught and he ministered was seeking the kingdom of God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's why we wrote these four books. And I have another one, Sonship, that was forwarded by Dr. Miles Monroe, the late. I want you to get it. Listen here. Go on Amazon. Get this. This will teach you everything we've studied. And we launched three of them, a historic event. But listen here. I begin to seek the kingdom. From Genesis to Revelation, everywhere that talked about the kingdom of God, the power of God, the glory of God, the nature of the Lord's kingdom, I begin to study it, and I have been transformed, Shalewa and I and our son, hallelujah, and our family, and everyone, we begin to travel the nations of the earth, teaching and sharing this wonderful message of the kingdom. Seek ye first. Do I seek the kingdom in the pandemic? Yes. You mean to tell me, you know, I have to work. Should I still be seeking the kingdom? Yes. Jesus said the priority of life is not what you eat, not what you drink, not what you wear, not what you cannot wear, not what you're looking for in a career, in a marriage, in a family, in a life. Jesus said the essence of true life and true living is seeking first. What does that look like? Well, it looks like first thing in the morning when I get up, I seek the kingdom of God. Throughout the day, I seek the kingdom. Before I go to bed at night, we seek the kingdom. Oh, your life is boring. Well, I'm telling you, it's not boring, it's fun. Hallelujah. We went to Port Lokaya and yesterday had a wonderful time, the family, and we were seeking the kingdom in the midst of that. You know, the kingdom is, you know, once the kingdom gets in you and you get into the kingdom of God, everywhere you go, you carry the glory of God. You carry the atmosphere of heaven. I'm going to talk about that. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. This is not about a religion. This is about a relationship. This is a relationship with Jesus. It is. You walk like him. You talk like him. You sound like him. You live like him. Let me give you a few examples. One, you know, we all saw the passing of that great rapper, uh, DMX. And I'm telling you, I saw him on some platforms. Praise God. And I'm telling you, even in those platforms, I was just shocked. 74 million albums. And as I was preparing for this message today, I want to use those persons as an example. Here is a guy, 74 million albums sold. And it's alleged that he has died a pauper of a drug overdose in a hospital almost all alone. One of the concerts I saw, I mean, in Europe, probably there were probably half a million people. He was rocking the stage. And I looked and I said, what is man? I mean, you had all those people, fans following you, but died alone. Or with just a one or two close, intimate family who could have been there. All of those people, you created a culture. Yes, what I mean by culture? A language. You know, hip-hop is a language. It's a culture. It's a dress style. Uh, you know, I don't agree with the stuff they say. Because most of it is profanity. It is immorality. It is perversion. And I watched that guy. And it would, uh, quite uh, by chance, as I was flipping through, preparing and studying last night, I got into one of his videos, uh, his songs, that he did on a, on a, on a um, program. And I showed it to my wife where he said, I know I'm going to hell. I, I couldn't believe a guy would say that. But my said to my wife as we share that those persons in these industries have developed a culture that they know that as they teach the word, not the word of God, 
as they go into these industries, there is a price, there is a culture, and many of them go into these cultures of hip-hop or of music, whether it's rap, reggae, or rock and roll. They know when they enter these culture of the, the music industries, many of them, or in the entertainment industry, there are certain sacrifices they have to make. They have to sell out their soul to the devil. Literally, it's true. Even though they may know God when they were a child, they have to put it aside because their music has to portray a certain culture. And that's the culture of hell. <clears throat> the culture of hell is death. They have, the Bible said, Satan came not but to kill, steal, and destroy. So everything they produce must produce death, disease, destruction. That comes in every aspect. I'm like, I laugh at some of these entertainers. They come on. I want to thank God. Who's which God are you talking about? Not the same God. Because as I study the culture of the kingdom, which you'll be doing with me over the next few minutes, stay with me. I realize the culture of the kingdom of God is separate. Because I don't celebrate any of these rappers. All they talk about is cursing and sex. And they degrade our black women. And every last one of them, they shoot up each other. We have a culture of murder. Even my Caribbean music, reggae, reggae, dancehall, hip-hop, junkanoo, carnival. It promotes sex, illicit sex, orgies, perversion, debauchery, drunkenness. They promote gunman, I can shoot you down, chop you up, kill you. That's what we've celebrated. And not until I came to the kingdom of God. Why am I saying this? I saw, I'm going deep now. If you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen quickly. Because it's about to get hot, hot, hot. Because we're going to speak the truth. What am I talking about? I'm trying to restructure just like the Holy Spirit had to. You know, I grew up in it. I, list, I grew up listening to, you know, shoot the batty boy and, and chop the, this one down and gun by gun and limb by limb. I grew up listening to those songs. Not that I want to, but I had uncles who, you know, used to get the dubs. And, you know, and I used to listen to, you know, going on a ghost movie. And, you know, and not until I got older. Or oh, Isley Brothers, uh, you know, listening to these guys uh, uh, singing songs. Or all of the hip hop. And, and as I sat down, as I came into the, not church. Now, I, I went to church. Church is to get you to the kingdom. That's a whole other message. Jesus said to Nicodemus, who was the head of the church at that time in John chapter 3, unless you are born again, let me just take this off here. Hallelujah. Jesus, uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus one day. Hear me now. I'm going to say this. Ah, thank you for waiting. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you still there? Stay with me. Come on, give the Lord her hand. Come on. You better put some thumbs up there. Uh, we're back, we're live. Thank you for that. Now, Jesus, again, I was saying, uh, Nicodemus, John chapter 3, let me read it here. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. I'm telling you, there are some people who, who like to creep at night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, here's this man, Nicodemus. Let me tell you about Brother Nick. Brother Nick, Nicodemus, was uh, the head of the church. He was the bishop. He was the apostle. He was the overseer of the church at the time. And he came to Jesus and said, now he didn't want to come to him to the day, in the day. That's like some people who deal with me. You know, some, you know, as hard as I minister and share, there are some pastors and leaders who come to me privately and want my uh, spiritual counsel. They don't want to identify with you openly. Because they are, I guess, ashamed, like Nicodemus, that they are head of a church and they got to come to a teacher. <laughs> Praise God. They got to come to a teacher and I got to tell them what the Lord says. I have to help them out and I love doing it because that's my joy. But here is Nicodemus coming to Jesus in the night and he said, uh, we know that you are a teacher come from God, John 3, but no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God is with you. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What am I saying? Jesus said, unless you are born again. And I hear all these rappers and these singers saying, thank God, but you can thank God all you want, unless you're born again. 
You can go to church on Sunday. You can be like Nicodemus, the head of the church, teaching under the scrolls, teaching under the scriptures, being faithful to uh, going to a building, which is good. You need to be in a church and in a ministry and, and following a local assembly. I'm not saying don't do that. I, I'm a part of the body of Christ. Some guy called me the other day uh, asking about that. And I said, let me tell you something. I grew up in the church. Um, a gathering place. I'm still part of the house of God. I can't wait till the pandemic over so we can be fully, fully, fully back in, in, in our nice facility. Until then, we're in our studio every day uh, doing the work of the Lord and teaching around the world in so many different formats. So I'm not talking about that. What am I saying? Jesus said, unless you're born again, unless you're born, Nicodemus said, um, um, tell me, what do you mean? What does it mean to be born again? Do I have to go back into my mother's womb? Jesus said, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. If you're not born again, I know the preachers stop preaching about born again because everyone wants to be contemporary. Everyone wants to be, ah, oh, we don't want to talk about hell. We don't want to talk about heaven. We don't want to talk about the culture of righteousness. Ah, oh, if you touch homosexuality, they're going to cut you off. Hallelujah. If you talk about lesbianism, if you talk about adultery, hallelujah. I'm on this live because, you know, I was on a platform. I thought we were on and they cut it. I don't know why. But I know this is the times we're living in. If you touch anyone or anything, you are liable now. A young man sent me something with label. He sent me something but label to use a false accusation. Well, you can't shut up the prophets. Because God has a voice still to speak with the prophetic voice. Now you got to use a little bit more wisdom. But the Lord still, the Lord is never going to change the message of the kingdom. You must be born again. Hallelujah. You could go to church and not be born again. You could be in church for 20 years and not born again. I spoke to someone yesterday and the person said if they, you know, if it wasn't for the pandemic, they would have died and gone to hell. And they are a high level person in ministry. I spoke to a guy last week and, and uh, a few weeks ago and he had a COVID-19 and he said if he didn't have COVID-19, I looked at him and I said, I knew you were going to bust hell wide open if you had died. And he acknowledged it was true. And this is someone who stay in church, stay listening to things on the radio. But in his own heart, he knew that he did not have relationship with Christ Jesus. He knew he was not born again. He knew that he was not living the life and the culture of the kingdom of God. Now I have a difference. There is a difference between church sheeness and church visiting and living the lifestyle of Christ Jesus and walking in his kingdom on a daily basis. There is a big difference. There is a big difference. Hallelujah. Jesus, let's go back to Matthew 6. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, we're going to go deeper now. I'm talking about the kingdom. I'm talking about the atmosphere. I'm talking about the glory of God. And if you don't carry the glory, uh, and the word glory means nature, character, essence. Hallelujah. Nature, character, essence. When we talk about glory, I know in the Old Testament, the glory of God dealt with the cloud and the pillow and the Lord appearing with thunder and clouds. That was Old Testament. In the New Testament, the Bible said Christ in us is the hope of all glory. It means when we make Jesus Christ Lord, he comes in us and we begin to carry the glory of God if we maintain it. Now the Bible said my spirit would not always dwell with man. If we get into immorality, have you ever been there? I've been there. I, I know what it is to, you know, come out of a powerful service of worshiping God or a wonderful week or you did, a, you know, a fast or you did a prayer or you were with the Lord in his presence and then all of a sudden you get around some friends and you start cussing and drinking. You can just feel the presence of the Lord just leaving you. You know, you feel naked. That's what Adam felt. He lost the glory of God. You can feel, or you know, you got into some immorality and you just know that you just felt that Jesus left your life. Oh my God, what are those days? What are some days? I pray I never go back on those days and you either. I mean, it was lonely. Can we be honest? 
know what I mean? You just were filled with joy and peace and comfort. And that old devil, that old sin nature came back to you. And you just thought it was all right just one more time to sin. And you know it was against God. And you just felt the presence of the Lord. You know it. You just feel it. You just feel when he left. And oh my God, you have to pray and fast and cry out to the Lord for sometimes some days or some weeks just to get that glory back to fill your life. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is not going to stay where sin is. The Holy Spirit is not going to stay. Will you still be saved? Yes. Did he forgive you? Yes. But you lost the glory. You lost the, the character, the essence, the nature of his presence dwelling in your life when you go back to that sin. Seek ye first. Now let's dive into this culture. Now Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Now the kingdom of, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is not church. Going to a local assembly. In fact, when the Bible talks about a building, it talks about the house of prayer. Jesus said, this house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Or when Jesus lived, he would go up to the tabernacle. Or he went as it was custom for him to teach in the temple. The building was called the temple, the tabernacle, the meeting place, or the house of prayer. When Jesus came... On the earth, he said, I will build my church. And the word church means ecclesia or ecclesia, which means the called out body of believers. We who are called out from the world, we who have made Jesus Christ our Lord and we live for him. We are the ecclesia. We are the church. You who have made Jesus the Lord, you are the church, not the building. And it's amazing. Uh, and why am I teaching this? Because we're talking about the kingdom of God. It's amazing as I study history. I'm a student of history. As I look through history, some of the denominations and religious groups calling themselves Christian have spent billions of dollars on stained glass windows, on chapels, on steeples, on, on organs, and, and artwork in buildings. But yet the people, they've spent little on the people. They have spent more money on organ than they have spent feeding the people surrounding the chapel. They have spent more money on stained glass and marble tile and uh, um, what you call it, mausoleums. Hallelujah. And put more money into building structures than in building the communities around which are the people. So when I began to study that the Lord said, they have done this in their own glory because I build people. When Jesus said, I will build my church, Jesus said, what he was saying is, I'm going to build people. I'm going to build people's lives. As a physician, I work on that every day. Building people's lives. Teaching the gospel, I work on building people's lives. I don't want your money to build a fancy building and to put stained glass and to put a hallelujah benches and new carpet. And I invest all the money in things. And then I left out serving the people. And the people come in the same way hungry and broken and in depression and in despair and in, 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 in hurt. And they are hopeless and they're suicidal and the children are wayward and the homes are destroyed and marriage is on the verge of divorce. Yet we go to a fancy building where there's no power to change any of that. That's not the kingdom of God. That's some religious activity. Y'all better pray for me because I'm going to teach it as I see it. That's some religious activity. And some of them want to be mad with me. I'm a physician. I deal with imperial evidence. If a patient comes to me, Irma, they come for healing. And when they come to me, I give them the best and the latest uh, 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 um, um, evidence-based medicine to get them well. When people come to me, they don't come hoping I can help them. They come knowing I can help them. When I put them on, on a, a, a treatment regimen, I know it's going to help them. And I tell them three days, if it doesn't help you, call me back because I got to switch it. Hallelujah. If that doesn't help you, then I got to refer you to another super specialist to get you sorted out. But hallelujah, I know my limitation. But the point I'm making is we are being trained with imperial knowledge. So why would I come and take this Bible, go to the same place for 20 years, and I'm still the same, still broken, still poor, still defeated, still sickly, huh? still depressed. 
still can't maintain my life, still can't maintain my health, still can't maintain my marriage, still can't maintain my relationship with family and friends, but yet I go to a building to appease my emotions. And then I leave there and don't talk to my own neighbor. I leave a wonderful stained glass building with organs and air conditioning. And I go to a workplace and I have the worst attitude. And I wear my collars. You see that? I wear my collar. I'm a bishop. But on the street you don't talk to people in the grocery store. Huh? I'm a prophet of God. And you tell someone you're going to call them back and you ain't call them back. And then when you see them you don't apologize. See, we got to separate the kingdom. I'm going to show you the kingdom. The kingdom of God. And what am I saying? The church is supposed to be the place where people come in and get born again. And like Nicodemus, Jesus said to them, unless you're born again, you cannot see. That word see means experience the live the lifestyle of the kingdom. The king church just gets you to Christ. And then the church, or, or not the church, the meeting place, the house of God, the house of prayer, is supposed to equip the people in every aspect of their lives. In the area of health, this book is not a religious book. This book teaches there are over 612 laws in the Old Testament that deal with health, that deal with marriage, that deal with family, that deal with uh, uh, outbreaks of disease and leprosy outbreaks. It deals with how to relate to your neighbor, how to reconcile legal matters and affairs. This is a legal book because we are living in a kingdom. We're living in a government. And yes, we're in a country. I might be living in a country, Bahamas, but my law that I live by is from the law of heaven. It's greater. That's what Jesus made when he says, seek the kingdom. Seek what the kingdom of God says about every aspect of your life. I don't run to a friend to find out. I go to the kingdom of God. What do I need to do to forgive? I can show you right now. Yeah, it is God to say, I will hate an enemy. Jesus said, in the kingdom of God, you love your enemies. Yeah, in the kingdom, it said, I can hold unforgiveness. I'll never forgive that man for what he did to me. I'll never forgive that woman. I'll never forgive that person who messed up my marriage or my family. I'll never forget that man who took all of my money. I'll never forget that woman who scandalized my name. But Jesus said, in the kingdom, you can't do that. In church, I can look at you cross-eyed. If I go to a church, uh, what we call church, I can look at you with a cross eye. But then if I truly live in the kingdom life, I got to forgive you. 70 times 7. I calculated that one time. That's 400, 7, 7 is 49. 490 times. Hallelujah. Jesus said, forgive your enemies 70 times 7. Now, I know none of you have forgiven anybody 490 times. Maybe my wife. I'm sure she's close to 500 times forgiving me. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. But Jesus said 70 times 7. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'm sure she didn't. But listen to me. Jesus said, unless you are born again, you can't even experience the kingdom. The church, when we say we go in the church, that's why I'm so upset. I look at a country and I said, Lord, how can we live in a country with so many churches, yet the stuff we are seeing, we're seeing every day. If, if, uh, if 70% of the country is Christian, if everyone shared the gospel with one person, the whole country would be saved tonight. So the Lord tapped me on my shoulder and said, son, everyone might be going to a church building, they call it, but not everyone is walking in the, the laws of my kingdom and applying them every day. What do you mean? I'm going to tell you now. And his righteousness. See, you got to seek the righteousness of God too. What is the righteousness of God? I teach all this in these books, man. You got to get these books on Amazon. Call me or let me get it. Righteousness has to be with Anet. Good to see you, Anet. Anushka. Righteousness has to be seeking with doing it the Lord's way. You know, when I go to make business decision, I don't just consult and get a business plan. I seek the Lord's way of dealing with the issue. 
When I want to deal with a marital issue, I don't go listen to some old friend to tell me what to do. I go to the scripture, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. Well, oh my goodness, that, well, whatever she did is forgiven. <laughs> Praise God, because I got to love her like Christ loved me. And Christ keeps loving me, and Christ keeps forgiving me, and Christ keeps providing for me, and Christ keeps blessing me, and Christ keeps giving me hope, and Christ keeps giving me honor, and Christ keeps giving me a new chance. And so when I look at her, that's what I got to do. Now, I don't have to obey the laws of the kingdom. I could go ahead and be a dummy and listen to what my friends say, and then I lose everything God has told me because I won't obey and seek after his right way of doing things. Praise God. Well, she could go to her friends and say, girl, you don't listen to that man. You don't listen to what he says. And, you know, she could dishonor me. Wives, honor your husband as the head. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, she could just go ahead and be cra act crazy. And, you know, she'll miss her blessing because, you know, she got to still honor me as the head. Hallelujah. She got to pray for me. Now, if I'm acting stupid, if I'm out there doing fool on her, well, then the Bible said, hallelujah, uh, you know, you know, if, if your wife wanted to be reconciled, would you praise God? But if, you know, you want to let go of that person, fine. I'm not saying that. The scripture has uh, um, um, laws that deal with, if I, you know, commit adultery on her, then there's a law that says she can receive me, forgive me, or she has grounds to release me spiritually because I violated the law. See, some of y'all, you know, let some old pastor tell you stay there and the man beating you black and blue and cheating on you. Don't be a dummy. Hallelujah. Ha that's not in the Bible. That's not in the scripture. Hallelujah. They came to Jesus and Jesus said, what do you think about divorce? Jesus said, uh, uh, except for the cause of uh, adultery. Now, if the person did that spiritually, the marriage is broken. It's finished. Now, if you want to forgive the person and y'all reconcile, I know many who have done that, praise God. But the principle is if you do that, it's nullified in the law of the land and in the law of the kingdom of God. Praise God. If you want to go back, hallelujah, make sure that man or that woman get their HIV and STD panel checked because I'm a physician and and I'm telling you, some go back and they get AIDS and die. Don't be a fool in this hour trying to be religious. You better get in the law of God. Children, obey your parents. That's the culture of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Uh, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. I don't care how much we take those children to church or we let them do their own thing if they dishonor. There's a young man I know grew up in the church. I mean grew up in the church all his life going to a local assembly and I'm telling you when he got married he didn't even invite his parents. Praise God. Now that's not the right thing. That's a dishonor. Hallelujah. I saw him the other day online trying to minister the word and I'm tired of this. You cannot, you know, fake and front Christianity but yet people know you're not living the principles and the laws that govern the word that bring real success. And I looked at him, I felt so sorry. Because I know no matter what he's done, no matter how he's having prayer meeting on online platforms, there's only so far his life will ever go until he apologizes and repents and says sorry for, for doing that to his own mother and father. You got married at your own mother and father's house and didn't even invite them. Then invite the other siblings, people who bless your life and did it like it's a problem. It's only so far that marriage is going to go. Uh, he better pray hard because the marriage is in crisis. How do I know? Only your father and your mother that your days may be well. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Look at that law. Now, I'm going to tell you some man. I'm talking about laws now. I'm talking about law. I'm not preaching on it. And you're going to get blessing. Man, if you obey the laws of the kingdom of God, if you seek first the kingdom, all other things shall be added. So I begin to seek the kingdom. And let me tell you, everyday stuff get added to me. Praise God. Every day, money just add. Every day, clothes. This, my, this is a new shirt I got. Stuff I got on, I just, just, just got added. My God. Uh, I'm telling you, every other day I'm going to pick up stuff because it's just being added. Every time I load up stuff and take it, I got stuff to load up now. It just keeps out it. I said, babe, you got to get rid of it. I, babe, you got to keep sowing it. Babe, you got to just, just get it to somebody who needs it. We got more than enough. I don't, <laughs> praise God. It just keeps adding. My God, my wife is going to be upset. I'm going to say this now. Uh, some, I just remembered it. A guy just brought some stone crab, a big bag. I missed and left it at the office. My God, I'm telling you, I left the crab by this big ones there. Oh, my goodness. Why? Stuff just, I didn't ask him, keeps adding. 
The other day someone came with papayas, brought it to me. The other day someone came with tomatoes and, and green peppers uh, and uh, bought me a big thing, uh, a hot cross bun, even after the uh, holidays were over. Some day some people came, what you want? We bring this, bring. I'm telling you all other things, and I'm telling you this works, this works. Now I'm not teaching you just to get things. I don't want you to abide by the laws of the kingdom just to get stuff. I want you to walk in the culture and the lifestyle and the glory of the kingdom of God. Oh my goodness, you better give me a few more minutes. So seek the righteousness. What is the right, what is the proper way of carrying out these laws in every aspect of your life? Don't just give me some religious activity. Don't give me some shouting and spitting and falling and tripping over. Then when you get up, you don't know what five principles to govern your um, family life. Don't tell me you got the Spirit. And I believe in the Holy Spirit. And you and I need the Holy Spirit. I've been baptized with the Holy Spirit evidence and speaking in tongues over 25 years. That's why we were able to write four books I like this. You know, look at the size of these books. I'm telling you from all the information. And if you go on our YouTube page, uh, K-A-M-I, Kami Bahamas, or if you go on Power and Glory TV, you will see, I'm telling you, my wife and I, we have literally hundreds of videos of just teachings, life principles, spiritual principles for years. I just give God glory. That comes from the Holy Spirit. I don't have that information. I don't have, I can't understand the truth, but it's by the Holy Spirit opening up my understanding as I study this, and now I apply them to areas of my life, they work so I can teach what I know because they work for me. And I go to South Africa, and it works in South Africa. And I go to India, and it works in India. And I speak to people in Bhutan and Nepal, and it works there. And I speak to people in Jamaica and New York City, and it works there. And I speak to people in South Africa and Kenya and Nigeria, hallelujah, and Sierra Leone and Malawi, and I teach it, and it works. This is imperial. Empirical. It's real facts. The Bible works. The laws of God works. The kingdom of God works. Jesus' word works. And he doesn't want it a hit and miss. What am I saying? He wants us to walk out the lifestyle. The culture. Just like how we have a culture. How we can know if you're from St. Lucia or St. Vincent. How we can know if you're from Grenada and the Grenadines. How we can know your, your language, your talk, your call. No, Jesus don't want you to be haphazard. When people see you, they should come in contact with the kingdom of God. When people see you, and when you open your mouth, and the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress. I'm going to look at that right now. They'll come as you are. Yeah, the Bible says come as you are, but don't stay where you are. I had that piece on there. Come as you are, but you don't, you're never supposed to stay where you are. I came in with a raggedy life. I'm supposed to be delivered in a few months. If I came hooked on cocaine, uh, you know, DMX, he should have been delivered. I wish there was someone who would have reached out to him and they got him delivered of that cocaine addiction. We have the power in the kingdom of God through the laws of God and the power of the Holy Spirit for people to be set free. Now everyone, uh, when he got sick, pray for DMX, pray for DMX. What you can do in prayer at that time? See, we use prayer as an exercise to appease our emotion. When you should have been using prayer all these years to get him saved so that he could have had a, 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 a be born again. Come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, pray for Michael Jackson. He's in the hospital. Pray for Whitney. She's in, a, in critical state. Pray for this one. We use prayer as an activity of religion. But prayer is something of power. When I pray, Jesus said, and when you pray, believe that what you pray for, you have. When I pray about something, I am praying it with an understanding that when I pray, I'm asking the Lord Jesus Christ to do something, and I believe what I'm praying for is going to get done. I don't use my prayer as some religious activity just to make me feel good about my bad conscience. What am I talking about? Seek the righteousness of God. And all these things, Matthew 6 and 33. Now, I don't know what things are to you. Your things might be your kid's school fee. Your things might be a car getting fixed. Your things might be some legal documents that you need delivered. Why do you think I teach the kingdom? Partly because I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I love his word. And partly because when I seek the kingdom, stuff happens in my life. <laughs> Praise God. It's my protection. The kingdom of God and teaching and living the kingdom of God is my protection. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Matthew 6 and 34. Therefore, take no thought for tomorrow. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Stop it, I say to you in Jesus' name. You're destroying your life. Man, you're worried so much about today. You're not even paying attention to those around you. You know, I've been around some people who are so worried, they never could celebrate the moment. I say to you today, celebrate the moment. Now, if you don't have Christ in your life, you have every reason to be afraid. You know, if I wasn't serving the Lord, I would be so afraid to live today. I mean, this is the worst time in the world not to know Jesus. I drive around this city, and I see people um, lined up at the bars. Hallelujah. And I realize they're suicidal. Hallelujah. You know why? Because first of all, we're in a pandemic. You have no masks on. You're drinking liquor. You're in the face of everyone in a crowded place. You're looking to get COVID-19. I'm sure. I mean, you're just suicidal. Secondly, you're there just drinking your worries away and think they're going to just disappear. When you leave drinking and drunk and driving on the, uh, uh, out into your car, you're going to go home to the same problem. You're going back to the same issue at the workplace. Do you realize that drinking and smoking and shooting needles and snorting cocaine doesn't change the problem? It amplifies it. Praise God. Take no thought for tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's go. Culture. We're talking about the culture of the kingdom. Shalewa read this morning. Uh, uh, Romans 14 and 17. Let's read that and then I'm going to come back and we're going to look at the culture of heaven. This is going to be powerful. You don't want to miss this. You need to get your families and you're going to write this down. Come on. Where's my scribe? Elizabeth, you're still scribing there? Sorry. Romans chapter 14. Romans 14 and 17. I love you guys. Thank you for joining Romans 14 and 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but righteousness, thank you, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now let me say this now. Oh my goodness. I have about 10 more scriptures I got to read for you today to make this sense. And then I'm going to close this up. Please stay. This is powerful. I'm diving into this. Give me a few minutes. Paul is saying that the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. The kingdom of God is not, you know, you know, I've heard the kingdom taught over the years, and people just brought the kingdom down to, oh, you're going to be successful in business, and, you know, you're going to be on this company, and they took Jesus out of it. No, the kingdom of God, Paul said, is not in meat and drink, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Those three things. Make a note in your Bible. The culture of the kingdom is these three things. Righteousness, peace, and joy. I want to tell you something. Some folks are going to look at you strange today. Hallelujah. Because some of you after the day, you're going to have righteousness. Ah, oh, you're judging people. Ah, oh, yeah, you, you think you're more righteous. See, that's the church talk. See, that's the devil. See, I used to be upset when folk, you know, criticized me and condemned me and mocked me and ridiculed me and made fun of me until I came into the kingdom understanding. Even in church, folk, when I went to a, a you know a service on Sunday or through the week, they mocked me. And I said, why God? And then the Lord said, because not everyone who attends that church building has a relationship with me. Not everyone who goes on Sunday with their five-piece suit or their beautiful hat and matching gloves and pocketbook and matching bag abides by my kingdom when Monday morning hits. And so when it comes to righteousness, see the first righteous kingdom and then righteousness. And then Romans talk about righteousness. Again, you see this word righteousness. It doesn't mean wearing long white. You know, I've seen some people who wear all white hat, gown, dress in the church. And they are, you know, they're the most wickedest people. There are some people who are sitting in the altar. They're the wickedest people. There are some men I know wear all types of collar and gown and robe. And they, they're the wickedest set of people you could find. I've been around many of them. I've been around some folk who could prophesy what in your bag. But when they leave out that, they go to a homosexual lifestyle. There are some people who uh, have been preaching on network television. This one guy, this preacher they used to bring over here all the time. He went on a TV show, and it shows how many women he was with. He was with one woman for 15 years. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, on this preacher's show. And, and, and all of their lives came up. And I said, oh my God. Can you imagine the amount of people he laid hands on? 
huh? That popular preacher and many of them, that popular bishop who from you know lay hands on all these people and they're in their private lives. I mean, the guy, you if I say the name, I'm not gonna call it. You know him, he was on a show that deals with preachers, and I'm telling you, you see their lifestyle. There's one preacher in Georgia area now. My God, the man I left his wife, hallelujah, with kids. Sweetheart him with one woman. Now he's sweetheart him with three, four, five different women. Uh, and his wife, you know, out there. And he out there. And he's on network television. And every week I see him. Uh, his the, the congregation is packed. This is a man who's left his wife. And has since left to have three or four other children with other women. But because he could preach, because he could orate words, because he could, he's charismatic. And I say, God, help the people. They are too blind. Huh? You're following a man who's a homosexual, a homosexual bishop. In fact, the Bible said, uh, he that uh, desires the office of a bishop. See, there again, that's the culture of the kingdom. He must be the husband of one wife, not five, six, seven, three, two, one. One. Not one at a time either. He must, he, he, he. Now you got homosexual bishops. See, when you take that principle out, then you could have homosexual bishop. Then you could have a lesbian, all kind of women now, uh, bishop. God said that he, he must be the husband of one wife. He must run his family well. He must do this. He. Who the devil give somebody permission to change the law of God? That's why the world is confused. Because we say one thing and then we go in his law and we change it. So if I will be a single man who's a bishop, then you have single men who are not married or who are divorced or who have three, four women or who's an adulterer, who's a homosexual, uh, who will be a bishop, then they take on bishop title. That don't, that's not for you. Take it off. You are in unrighteousness. Because you are violating God's principle. How do you get bishop? And, and the Bible says you must be the husband of one wife when you're a bishop. Huh? You and some of these denominations, they don't marry woman. Huh? They, they bishops and they don't marry woman. You're not a bishop. Huh? You can call that bishop all you want. You are, you, you, you are in religion. You're not in what Jesus' kingdom said. Why don't we stop changing what Jesus said? Can a woman preach? A woman can do everything in the kingdom of God except be a bishop. Because the Bible said the woman who wants to be a bishop, and uh, she can be everything except a deacon. The Bible said, he that wants to be a deacon, you want me to find it? I'll find it. He that desires the office of a bishop, he is a man. He that wants to be a deacon, there's no scripture in the Bible said deaconess. We keep changing the laws of God. And then he gets upset when a homosexual won't be a bishop. When a homosexual won't be an overseer. When a homosexual want to be in these things, a singer, a praise and worship leader. We get all up in arms. But we, 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 we want to violate God's law in some areas. Uh, uh, and then when it comes to other areas, we want to get upset. Because we're doing it. Mm. Righteousness. Righteousness. It means if the Bible said, I don't care if I do it or not, my ma or my pa doing it. We say in the Bible, it means your mother or father. They are wrong. My father is doing, doing something. I spoke to a well-known man who's a great bishop in this country. I say, you're wrong. I had to tell him that. And I highly respect him. I had to tell him he's wrong. There was a young prophet who told another bishop, stop winding up on TV and shaking up. And now he's his best friend. He better be careful with that. My wife told me that. I said, yeah. Why? Be a prophet. You tell a man that he is wrong. He's violating the kingdom of God. He should have called him privately, but the Lord probably spoke to him a long time. What am I saying? We got to call it wrong, wrong, and right, right, so that we can bring correction to our nation. We want to, you know, abort unborn babies. I hate hypocrisy. There are some women who go and they go and abort babies in the womb. There are some healthcare professionals who are aborting babies electively, not in an emergency. I don't believe in no case 
But in some cases, uh, that doctor and the woman has to discuss it. I don't believe in no case, but in that emergency situation, in the event of saving a life, something might happen. But I mean, electively just killing babies. And then they won't be upset when gunmen go on our street and slaughter people day by day. Huh? What hypocrisy. Huh? We want to talk about this life matter and this life matter because, uh, you know, the, you know, certain person, black person, uh, uh, but yet black killing people every day. Black on black crime is killing more people than any white man has ever killed black in our modern time. Furthermore, the slave traders, when they went to Africa, they weren't, the slaves were not sold by white people. There were blacks in West Africa who captured people throughout Africa and sold their own people to the slave master. Well, don't take black people out of that. You won't blame the white man. And I'll stop this foolishness. The black people in Africa took their own black people just like today. You go to almost all of these black African countries and guess what's happening? The leaders are stealing up the money. Taking all the resources, taking the gold, the diamond, the resources, the wealth of all the nations in India too and in Asia and all around the world. There are people around the world where the leaders get their benefit and the poor suffer. The middle class suffers in every nation. That's it. Yeah. First Timothy 3 and 11, the office of a bishop. It says a man. Now, who gave any archbishop, any overseer the right to ordain woman as bishop and think you're going to see Jesus heaven? How can you make it into heaven if you keep changing God's word? Who gave you permission on earth to change God's word? Huh? So now when you go to preach now, guess what? How are you going to preach that? If you're a man who ordained a woman as a bishop, then, then the congregation will say, hey, pastor, what about this? I thought it said this. How you wiggle that change the word to make that happen? Now when the young fella shooting someone up, he can feel it's justified. I can kill too. The Bible say you can kill. The Bible say you can be homosexual. The Bible say don't judge. You can love everyone. See? When we keep changing the word, changing the laws of God, the laws of God are set and they're forever established in heaven. What do you do, Pastor? I wish the women bishops would just say, Lord, I repent. I was wrong. I want to see your face. I need to repent to my congregation. I need to repent to every woman, man, boy, girl that follow me because I openly violated what the law of God said concerning this office. I need to retract this. I'm sorry. I need to renounce this. I'd rather be right with God than to die and go to hell because I've changed God's word. And build denomination on the lies. How can we do this? Okay. That's not the culture of God. But of righteousness. Next. Peace. Man, you can have such peace. God has given me such peace. I can teach like this. Because why? I don't need to run after nobody. I've learned the principles of the word that I'm sharing with you. And when you apply it, your life will be at peace. I can go to bed at night. I don't have to run and duck and dodge. I jump in my car. Uh, I can go anywhere I want to go, travel anywhere. We travel around the world. I don't have one fair one day because my hand is in the life of God's hand. Joy in the Holy Spirit. I am so joyous. Anybody who know me know I'm full of joy. If you see me angry, it's just for a short time because I want something done. I need it moving a certain way. But I, it's a righteous and a holy anger. I, you know, I ain't gonna get angry to hit and beat my wife. Hallelujah. I didn't get angry and hit nothing to break up my fist and break up dishes. It's a, the devil is a liar. I got the joy of the Lord in the Holy Ghost. And you need that too. I can laugh at what's going on. Praise God. You don't like me. The devil is a liar. I don't care less. Hallelujah. I'm gonna keep on preaching the word and living it. All right, let's get into scripture now. We're talking more about living the laws of the kingdom of God. Let me tell you the difference between churchiness and the culture, the atmosphere of the kingdom. If you love this, say amen. I know this is touching some of you and I, but the Lord loves us so much he wants us to change. Now let's move quickly. We got a lot to govern. Matthew 22. What are we looking at? I'm continuing on the kingdom, laws of the kingdom. Or, or, or what I'm talking about is the, the culture. The culture. Culture of the kingdom. 
Some of the things I'm exposing is anti-culture. They're not a part of the culture of the kingdom of God. While we're living in the earth, while we're living in the earth, we live by the laws of God. Ah, uh, my God. Now, okay, here we go. Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 uh, and verse 9, I want to plug in these books because that's what I did. I, we studied this Lord's Prayer and captured everything out of it. Watch what he said. After this manner, Matthew 6 and 9, where's my scribe? Put that there, please. Thank you. <laughs> After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now I'm going to stop there for a minute. So in order for me to understand, thank you for liking and sharing this. We're going to go deeper now. Give me about 20 more minutes, please. Get your Bible. I have these scriptures to go through to build, your, to, to build my case. And then we're going to wrap up. You're going to be tremendously blessed. After this, I'm going to pray for you to walk in kingdom authority and blessing. And your life will never be the same. Never, ever, ever be the same. I found these secrets and it's blessing me. Hey, hallelujah. It's going to bless you too. You're not going to lack. I prophesy it. You know what prophecy is for? I'm tired of these fake prophets. Prophets, no, I prophesy today. You're going to walk in the truth of God's kingdom. You and your family will be transformed forever. Everything you need as you pray and as you abide by these kingdom principles are going to come into your life. Maybe not overnight. <clears throat> I'm not going to promise you by tomorrow. Some of you by tomorrow. Some of you by next week. Some of you is going to take six months of working these principles and laws in your life until you get it. Some of you is going to take a year to really get it. And once you start walking in the laws and the principles and the policies of the kingdom of God, your life will start to take on a new shape. You will start to walk in righteousness. You will start to walk in peace. You will start to walk in joy in the Holy Spirit and your family is going to get upset with you. I want to let you know now. I thought when I walked in righteousness, my family, some of them would love me. No, some of them hate me more now because they think who you think you are. You're becoming too successful. You're becoming too knowledgeable. I'm telling you folk hate when God begin to bless you. Okay, when God begins to promote you, I want to let you know, I want to warn you ahead of time, because some folk, uh, hallelujah, are going to despise you, because you're going to look like Jesus, and you're going to stop, uh, you're going to change your culture. I'm no longer a Bahamian, I'm a kingdom man, praise God. I'm living a kingdom lifestyle, hallelujah. I'm no longer a black man, praise God, hallelujah. How do I know that? When we went to Asia, and we had brothers and sisters, and we were teaching sons and daughters, and, and delivering the word all throughout Asia, I realized, oh my my goodness, I'm not a black man. Oh, my outside, what do I mean? My outer skin might be full of melanin, but I don't think like the typical victimized black man of the Western world. I don't think ghetto. I don't think sagging pants. I don't think dropping off socks. I don't think nappy hair. I don't think I'm going to make it just through some hip hop or music industry. I'm not living a false dream. I'm not running and ragging down our women and calling them BITs. I'm not going from place to place impregnating women. I'm not destroying families and homes. I'm not getting in legal problems. I'm not smoking dope and marijuana and thinking it's cool. I'm not just sitting and smoking a big cigar, listening to hip hop, leaning back in my ride or ride. I'm not trying rolling with a 45 millimeter, trying to put a cap in another, you know what, and I word. I'm not an ignorant man. I've been transformed by the kingdom. I've been changed by the kingdom of God. So it makes me universal. I want to break this culture out of you through the word of God. If you let the Lord have his way, he'll break poverty mentality out of your mindset. He'll break the defeated mentality. He'll break, uh, uh, you know, you know, the culture. You know, when I grew up, the culture was boy, go there and impregnate as many women as you want. And the young ladies are out there. You've got to get a change of mindset and culture. Uh, we, my wife and I, we went to Port Nakai with our son. And, uh, you know, we went with our family. And I'm telling you, we went out there and we went into a sh for dinner. And uh, just to have a wonderful time. And this is a young lady. She came walking with this tight, you know, punt, you know, all in one bodysuit, walking with this guy. And I looked at my wife. I said, boy, she, the guy ain't have nothing else to look for. All of her things were showing. All of her shape, her breasts, her you know what, and her you know what, was showing. And that seemed to be the common thing. And I point out to my wife. I said, my 
Lord. But that's the culture. See, that culture is not kingdom. That's not righteousness. That's not peace and that's joy. That's someone who's broken. That's someone who's looking for love. That's a young lady who's using her body to attract a man, not knowing that after she attracted man and gave that man a body, she can forever, if she hasn't already done it, she will forever have to keep using her body and not her brains and not her integrity and not her intellect to get a man and to keep a man. She got to keep using her body. And I said, oh, God, look at this. And I went up further and we saw another. And we went, we went all through that area and it made me cry in my spirit. And I said, babe, what are we doing? Are we doing enough? Are we doing enough? Is the culture of the kingdom of God getting out of these four walls and impacting a generation? Or are we shouting in a building on Sunday and on Saturday nights our girls are giving up their bodies in the backseat of a car? Are we shouting on Wednesday night in a Bible study and our young men are being drunk to a stupor on Thursday night during happy hour. What are we doing? Is the culture of the kingdom invading our young people and our nation? Obviously not. Because guns are prevailing in our streets. With all these bishops and prophets and apostles and pastors and evangelists. We can't get it right yet. That's in every country. Huh? But guess what? DMX was changing the minds of our young people. P. Diddy is changing the mind. The rappers and the entertainers are telling our children and our young people and even our adults, don't think we got away. Lil Nas is telling the children to worship. Not Jesus, Satan. By the way, no, he came out with a satanic shoe. And he's making no apologies. Huh? We, 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 we are not invading like we should because we are playing church and not living according to the principles and the laws of the kingdom and we're not influencing the lives of people like we should as fast as we should. But you know what? The television, they're telling your children and our children how to dress, what to drink. Hallelujah. I asked one of the young ladies, I say, what is that you're drinking? They had a mixed drink with coconut rum. It's green, green, green. I said, what that is? She said, it's called Aliens Pee, urine or something like that. Right, babe? I said, oh, my God. I said, okay, thank you. When she left, I said, oh, my God, what is this? The culture is telling them to drink a vossier, the culture of satanic kingdom and the culture of Satan and the world's culture is telling them wear tight skin jeans. The world culture is saying meet a man at a bar and sleep with him that night. Uh, the world is telling them uh, it's all right for a woman to enjoy and express her sexuality. Hallelujah. Uh, the world is telling uh, uh, them it's all right to be transgender. The culture of the world is saying now, if you even talk about it, they can hold you accountable and want to take you before the law for saying, speaking about anything. We better use this time now because a day is coming when the children and we're going to have, you know, in some countries, the children don't honor the father and mother. It's going away from the laws of God. The children can take the parents to court and sue them. A 12 year old. In the U.S. and Canada could sue his parents and divorce himself from the parents. The children in some countries could divorce from the parents and get another set of parents. We are living in the culture of the world system. Satan's culture is invading. The culture is saying it's all right to have sweetheart. Now women are comfortable with having a man who has three, four different wives because the culture says it's all right. Once he come home to you, shut your mouth up. The devil is a liar. 
There are some hallelujah cultures now that saying, you woman, you can have your, your side man on the side. Once you come home and cook and clean, he can have his woman and you can have your man. That's what the culture is deeming. And these are people who are bishops and these are people who are deacons and these are people who are elders in the church and they're living this way because church is not reforming their mind. Because the kingdom is not being taught there. Where was I going? You all still love me? There's some deep stuff now. You got to go get out of the kitchen. It's getting hot. Matthew 22. Uh-huh. I'm not living churchy anymore. Church nearly messed me up. I sat in the men in church for many years. Some of them are good. They meant well. I love God for them. Thank God for them. But they, I'm not going to live at that limited realm. There's some men I saw and women who were in church. The boy... They were worse than sinners. Hallelujah. Some of them still are. They're just hiding under church. Church you can hide. Kingdom you can't hide. Hallelujah. When you live in the kingdom, your life is an open book. Because either you live by these laws or not. Your wife can be able to say if you're living a lie or truth. Your children. Hallelujah. Your family. I can tell anyone who's living in the kingdom. Let me talk to your wife or your husband. If you're not married... Let me talk to your, whoever live in the house. If you're a child, I can tell if you live in the word of God. Let me talk to your parents. Let me, let me, let me see if you really live in the kingdom. Let me talk to your co-workers. No, I, no, I, I know you shout and, and have the spirit on Sunday. Let me talk to your co-workers. They'll tell you that gospel, that one who scandal people, that one who always causing problems, that one, and, and she's deacon, she's evangelist. She wear a big white hat every Sunday and moderate choir director. But that's the one who always gossiping with the boss. That's the one who always causing problem in the neighborhood. That's the one who don't talk to their neighbor when they pull up in the yard. That's the one who have the meanest attitude, who face always frown up, who never have righteousness, who never have peace, who never have joy in the Holy Spirit. They're the most unpleasant people to be around. That's churchiness. Kingdom is righteousness. That person, ooh, they have a good name in the city. Even if you want to make up a lie about them, you can't even find one on them. Even if someone accused them, by the time you check it out, it's a lie. That's righteousness. That's true kingdom living. That's living in the realm of the kingdom of God. That's walking in the glory and the character, the nature, the essence. The word glory is kavod, the essence. That's walking in peace. Man, that person is a peacemaker. Man, they might be arguing now, but later on, they bring people together. They sit down and say, I'm sorry. They bring peace to the marriage. They bring peace to the children. You know there's some parents, they bring confusion among the children. Peace. Righteous is peace. What am I talking about? There are some parents who go to church, but they never reconcile the children. I know some families, the woman, a man, I can tell of many, many, many in my city, many in my nation, many have been around, around in different places. But I can talk about here. They go to church every Sunday. They purport to be believers in Jesus Christ. But they never sat down to bring peace among their own children. How are you going to see the face of Jesus? The kingdom is righteousness, then peace. That means you're not in the kingdom. If you can't bring peace, you're not in the kingdom of God. If you can't go to work, and when there's an argument, you bring peace among everyone, you're not in the kingdom. If you are a mother, and you and I know a mother, hallelujah, <laughs> some parents, they have some children, and all the children, they warring all the time. They warring on Facebook, they're trying to compete, to see who's the best. Siblings now, siblings, rivalry is so strong between these set, because the parent never, and I know it by wisdom now, the parents of those siblings never sought them now and say, I love both of you equally. I love all of you equally. You are all my children. You must get along. I, 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 you need to get along. I'm speaking as your mother. I'm speaking as your father. We're speaking as your parents. End this debate. Bring peace to this family. There are some mothers who could have done that and healed the family. No. Some mothers, they, they strive on the strife of their children. Because if the children are against each other, they're going to love one more than the other. There are some parents who strive on the fact that the children hate one parent more than the other. 
love one parent more than the other. And they use that to manipulate the children, to have the children love them, to give them more gifts, to give them more uh, favor, to do more things. They, uh, they want them to love them and hate the father. Or love the mother, and, 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 or, or love the father and hate the mother. Hallelujah. And they go to church, but they tell the children, your mother is a bad woman. She's this, she did that. There's a guy, he sends me uh, quotes all the time. But he is a wicked man. Hallelujah. Sends me quote. But guess what? His his children are war at each other. And he won't send me quotes. Why are you sending me Bible quotes when you don't apply them to your own life? Huh? You're living in a shack up relationship. Your children are all messed up. None doing what is right before the Lord. You have no legacy. You you messed up your life. You messed up your marriages. You messed up your children. They're angry with you, bitter with you. And you keep perpetuating this bitterness and division. But yet you will send me all the quotes every morning. My phone quotes it. And I'm like, when this man will take these same quotes that he's sending me. And live it for God's sake. When are you going to stop shacking up and just go and take that woman to the altar and get married? Huh? Why are you sending me quotes all these years? You living with a woman for years and the woman who you live with grow up in church too. All these people being in church all these years still go to church and no pastor, no leader, no one can see what they're about and get them rescued. Then when they die, they have all these wonderful things about Sister Mary. Mary lived in a shocking up relationship, Pastor, and you didn't see that? And you let her die and go to hell because you were afraid to teach like this the law of God to get people out of righteousness, and that person's soul was lost. You talk about DMX's soul. Where is his soul? Matthew 22, verse 37. We're talking about the culture of the kingdom. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Listen, the first and greatest commandment is loving the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. That's the culture of the kingdom. People who love the Lord, and you can see it. They're not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm a physician, but that don't stop me from loving Jesus. Who said a career? If you're a doctor, that means you can't go to hell? Huh? Because you're a brain surgeon, you can't be lost. You might be very skilled with operating on a human brain, but you might have a wrecked marriage and a dysfunctional set of children and a messed up uh, set of uh, uh, internal lifestyles that you live. You might be a, you know, an orthopedic surgeon, but you're going on your fourth wife. It's something wrong with you. You're lost, you're broken, you're disheartened, you're miserable. Don't tell me because you can perform a procedure. You're a pilot, hallelujah, but you lost your family. You're a member of parliament or you're a politician and, and your home is crumbling and you're a drunken stupor every weekend. You're a lawyer and you're freebasing, snorting cocaine huh, to get a high. To lift you up through the despairs of pain. That the career don't mean you nothing. Huh? I've been around every career. And all of them need the Lord. They're broken without Jesus Christ. And they hide. I spoke to one professional this past week. Highly trained. And the person said, oh my goodness, I was so lost and broken. I was running after things, going, 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 going. After one thing, after the other. And I didn't even know what I was going after. You know that some people keep going after money and power and influence. And when they get more, they want more money. And they want a bigger practice. And they want a bigger firm. And they want a bigger organization. They keep going after it. And when they stop, they don't realize they're running from themselves. Because why? Their life is a shamble. And they are in pain. And they are in disgrace. And they're shameful. Jesus said, you must love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. You know what the church folk do? You know what the world does? Anytime they can know, you could be passionate about DMX crying over him. You could be passionate about a sports figure or a sports star or a sports team. You could be uh, falling out uh, uh, at the appearance of, of an uh, entertainer. But get excited about Jesus and then it's a problem. Get excited. 
about the Lord, Dr. Kalma, and, 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 and folk call you fanatical. Get excited about righteousness. Get excited about the kingdom. Get excited about the scripture. And guess what's going to happen? The world is going to call you a fanatic. They're going to call you, you, you something wrong with you. But no, ah, I love Kobe Bryant. Uh, cry and mourn when he dies. There's nothing wrong with that. But cry over Jesus and his shed blood. Uh, and it's you crazy. Huh? Cry over Leonardo DiCaprio. Remember the sacrifice of Paul the Apostles and you're crazy. No, what are you crying over? And so the world has become cold. And then the people are in the kingdom of God have become cold and callous. And now things are infiltrating in the body of Christ. Now it's all right. You know, they want to quiet you down, push you to the side and be quiet. Shut up. Don't touch those things. Don't touch unrighteousness. We don't talk about those things around here. We don't talk about hell anymore. We don't talk about heaven anymore. We don't talk about righteousness anymore. No, we don't talk about sin anymore. No, that's not what we talk here. We're positive. We're, we build people up. We don't know. Some of those same people who you're building up, leaving and going into lifestyles and things because they were never corrected. Oh, as I pray and prepare for this, the Lord said, I'm going to hold many of the leaders of this country accountable. Why? It's political season now. They're going to shut up. You notice they're being shut up, right? And that's true. Say amen. This country is too biased, man. I've seen it around the world, but it's bias here. I mean, pastors, bishops, prophets, they had all kind of prophecy when the last part of government was in. All kind of prophecy. This is going to happen. When I looked, when the government changed, they were on boards. The same prophets were on boards for this government. I said, oh, now I see. Now I see why they were attacking. Now their party is in. Murder happening. This happening. Everyone's quiet because they're on board. They're on committee. They're making money. They can keep shut. What a bunch of sellouts, man. They're not in the kingdom of God, man. They're in church. They're going to go to heaven. They're going to see the Lord. Hopefully. All of us will hopefully. If we don't obey what the Lord has said. There's a guy who was teaching on the sin of omission. It means you could die and go to hell because you didn't do what God said. You could do what God says, but if he told you some things to do and you didn't do that, that's the sin of omission. So the sin of commission is, I know fornication is wrong and I go and fornicate. That's the sin of commission. But if the Lord tell me, speak to the nation and tell them, listen here, you are going in a dark place and call this nation back to God, back to righteousness. Bring them back to Yeshua, the Christ. Bring them back into being born again so they can begin to live and walk out the life of the kingdom and the lifestyle of the kingdom. It ain't going to take, it ain't going to disappear immediately because you got to wash yourself with the word. What do I mean? You got to go from, from Genesis to uh, Revelation and everything the word says you and I must do, we got to implement it. David said, your word I have put into my mind. So I may not sin against you. He said, thy word I have hidden my heart. But the word heart is not cardia, it's suke. Thy word have I put into my heart, my mind, so I may not sin against you, O Lord. I've kept your word on my mind so that every day I do not violate your laws and your precepts. Precepts. Not a magical thing. This is the first and greatest commandment. Matthew 22, verse 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. Everything in scripture Jesus said. You don't have to know all of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. I encourage you to read it. We have to read it. We have to learn all those things. We have to learn Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, Hezekiah, Nehemiah, Joel, Amos. We, we have to know Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Huh? We have to learn those things. But Jesus said all of what is taught in those brings, hangs on these two things. All of the principles of those books, the law, and what we call the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, all of the laws and the poetic um, scriptures like the Psalms of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes and all of the minor prophets and the major prophetic books we call them. Uh, all of that would, has been taught by those men of old. All of them come to this very thing. 
All of that hangs on loving the Lord thy God. That's the culture of the kingdom of God. If you're ashamed to love the Lord publicly, he said, I'll be ashamed of you. Huh? If you have family and loved ones, you might even come on Facebook like this. I ain't ashamed. I love Jesus. When I was there dead, where were you? When I was almost lost, where were you? When I was almost killed, where were you? Where were you when I was in Dorian Storm and a rage crossed my city? I don't have time to play now. Where were you? I was abandoned and rejected. I love the Lord and I'm not ashamed because what he's done for me, not a Christ person in this earth can pay. So I'm not afraid and I don't need nothing from none. If, they don't, if God touch your heart and give me, I'll take it. If you don't want to, that's your business. I have lost all of that uh, love for man over love of Jesus. And that's the problem with some of you. I pray today, you are free from the love of man so you can truly live. You love man. He said, love the Lord thy God first. Then love your neighbors yourself. Okay. Good. That's found also in Deuteronomy 6 and 5. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at some principles of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6. Let's go quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Are you with me? Say hallelujah. Say glory. Shall praise the Lord. Shout something there. Uh, we already look at Matthew chapter 6. Praying the Lord's prayer. Matthew 6, 33. We've done that already. Uh, Jesus said, now, I talked about Matthew 6 and 33, seeking the kingdom. I talked about, now, this is another, I might close on this. Oh my goodness. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 talks about, we started this already. Our Father, the Lord's prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Now, this is what I'm going to, I'm probably going to, let's see what the Lord does. Are you with me? Say amen, say hallelujah, shout glory, something so I can know you're there. Uh, I'm pulling on the anointing of, uh, of what the Lord is doing and pulling on your demand in the spirit. What did I do? Jesus said, pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That deals with worship. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now Jesus is not going to tell his disciples to pray something, number one, that he knows existed. What do I mean? Jesus, when his disciples asked him what to pray, teach us how to pray, he didn't go on and start praying for things. Why do I know that? Because we just read it. Secondly, Jesus also taught his disciples, we just read it earlier, seek first the kingdom of God. So the first thing on Jesus' mind is his kingdom being established in the earth, as it is in heaven. So in my scientific mind, I thought, first of all, Jesus teaching them to pray the kingdom means the kingdom is not on the earth as yet. Jesus teaching his disciples to say pray the kingdom come on the earth means that he knows that if you and I pray for the kingdom of God, our prayers can actually cause the kingdom of God to come to the earth. Because he wouldn't tell us pray something if he knew that when we did it, it wouldn't produce the results. So Jesus told his disciples to pray something that he wanted done. And that he knew that if we pray for the kingdom, it would come. And when we seek the kingdom, all things should be added. So that means when we pray the kingdom, everything is added. My fourth thing is, are you with me? My fourth thing is, if Jesus said pray for the kingdom to come in the earth as it is in heaven, then I need to understand what's going on in heaven. Praise God. This is a revelation here. And I said, oh, my father. Boy, if y'all stay with me, I got some scriptures here that you need to hear. Don't go yet. Hold your Sunday dinner. Tell them, hold it. This will change your life. I said, if Jesus said, pray for the kingdom to come to the earth as it is in heaven, then I must know what's in heaven so that when I pray, I will be bringing that here in my prayer. So heaven is of great importance to Jesus. Heaven is of great importance to how we live. Heaven is of great importance because that is the place that Jesus won on earth. Now, I'm not going to assume what's in heaven. I'm not going to just phantom of what is heaven. It means I need to go in scripture and find out exactly what's going on in heaven because that's how I need to be living here while on earth. That's how I need to be praying here while on earth. That's what Jesus wanted to see here while 
he is on earth and when he's gone even to the day. So I'm glad you asked. Let's look at heaven. Psalm, 1, Psalm 11 and verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. My God. So when I'm praying for the nature and the culture to change in my city and in my earth, I can't just do it naturally. I have to pray for the kingdom of heaven to come to the earth. What's in heaven? Number one, Psalm 11 and 4 says, the Lord is in his temple in heaven. Secondly, the Lord's throne is in heaven. Praise God. So when I'm praying, what we call the Lord's Prayer, I'm really asking for the throne room of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come into the earth. Oh my goodness. Now we're going to study later on what his throne is. Because where he is, there his throne is. And where his throne is, there is glory. There is power. There are miracles. Let me see if I have that one here. In Revelation chapter 20, we're going to read. Yeah, let's go there. Revelation 4, 1 to 6. After these things, I look, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me. So there's a great door in heaven. There is a great sound going on in heaven. What is that sound? And it said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. Immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, Revelation 4, 1 to 6 says, a throne was standing in heaven. Again, in heaven there's a throne. So Jesus must be one the throne of Adonai, Elohim, Jehovah, to be in the earth. Wow. And one sitting on the throne. And he who was sitting was like a jasper stone. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. And a sardis appearance. So there's a beautiful person sitting. And, and, and the only description that John in the book of Revelation can give of this person sitting on the throne was this jasper stone. This beautiful, I guess like an emerald. And there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald. Now you ladies... Who like emerald? Can you imagine just a, 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 a gigantic emerald just around the throne in appearance? Let me quickly get there. Revelation. Because we need to understand what we're bringing down into the earth as it is in heaven that's going to affect our culture. Yes. Watch this. Um, verse 4. Revelation 4 and 4. And round about the throne were 24 seats. And upon the seats I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. There was worship going on. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. There is royalty. There, I mean, you, know, I, you know, the devil, when I was growing up, I was so afraid to read the book of Revelation because the devil had people tell us it's difficult to understand, it's scary, it'll give you nightmares. That devil is a liar. You read the book of Revelation, that should be the first book the Christian as they come into being a born-again believer, read. It's the most loving, powerful, futuristic present, all in one book. It tells us the beauty of heaven, the beauty of the throne room of heaven, where we're going to go one day, where we're going to be. It tells us all the magnificence of the throne of God, and it's not only there. We on the earth have an opportunity to pray. Jesus told us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. So this is what's happening in heaven. And on the throne were 24 elders. Revelation 4. We're looking and we're piercing into heaven now, guys. Harley, I don't know if you've ever gone into this before like this. But we're piercing into heaven. We're taking the veil off. We're here in the earth. But we have scriptures that tell us what heaven looks like. Because if we want heaven down here. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. What am I saying? I'm going to pray in a few minutes. We're praying for heaven to come into our lives. Oh my goodness. We're praying for heaven to come into our home. I wrote this book, The Kingdom Experience Heaven on Earth. I'm teaching you how to get heaven into your life. Woo, glory to God. I'm teaching you how to get heaven into your thinking. I'm teaching you how to get heaven onto your bodies. I'm teaching you how to get heaven into your 
home life and the marriage and the children. I'm teaching you how to get heaven all up on your lifestyle. I'm teaching you how to get heaven all over your business. I'm teaching you how to get heaven. Hallelujah. And I know when heaven is upon me. Huh? I know when heaven is around me. I know how to in, in, uh, uh, invite the presence of the king into a place where I'm worshiping. And my culture has changed. I love heaven's presence so much while in the earth. I don't, I don't have time to cuss you out. Uh, I don't have time to get angry and bitter. I don't have time to commit adultery, even if I wanted to. I, I just love the glory so much. I don't want to lose the glory. Uh, I don't want to lose the culture of heaven around me. I don't want to lose the blessing of heaven on my life and around me everywhere I go, in the food store, in the market, in the city, in the car, in my workplace. The glory of heaven just rests with me because I have the king with me and wherever the king goes, he brings his throne. And wherever the throne of God is, there's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when everyone is freaking out, I got peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they're wondering, why? What's up with this dude? They don't understand. I got the kingdom with me. I got the king in me, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. The Bible said the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So when I pray and worship, I usher the king's presence in me. Hallelujah. I, I usher his presence in my atmosphere. And I just walk in the glory all week. And all of a sudden, all things are added. When I need uh, gas, here comes gas money. When I need food, uh, here comes food. Uh, when I need clothes, here comes clothes. Uh, when I need healing, here comes healing. How every Everything I need comes because I know how to access heaven. Oh, glory. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Revelation 4 and 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. And there were lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. What else is in heaven? Jesus said, when you pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He said, I want you to pray for my throne to come. But I also want you to pray for my seven spirits. Now, 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 now I didn't make this up. The seven spirits of God. I got to teach on that another time. There's one Holy Spirit. But this says the seven spirits of God. Well, Shalewa, would you just type there the seven spirits, the spirit of might, the spirit of power, and give us that scripture so I can read that. So folk don't think I'm talking some heresy. There's one God, one Lord, one faith, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real. But the Bible talks about the spirit, the seven spirits of God, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel. She's going to find that. Post that there. You're going to read that up and see. Verse 6, and before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. Woo, that's beautiful. Oh, glory to God. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, there were 24 beasts full of eyes before and behind. That's pretty to me. Hallelujah. You, I, my mind just thinks about a peacock. All of those beautiful eyes like on this. Man, God, this is beautiful, man. I, this ain't nothing to be afraid of. Heaven is beautiful. This is what Jesus wants to come to the earth. Now, while we're living here, not when we go there or not when the end of the age, he said, pray for this to come now. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast was like a calf. And the third beast had a face of a man and the fourth beast was like a fine angel. Uh, and, 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 and the four beasts and each had six wings. That's a beautiful looking creature. They are full of eyes within and they rest not day and night. And uh, holy, 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 holy. They start saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Jesus said, when you pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. He said, pray for the worship of heaven to come to the earth. The worship to fill the earth day and night, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Oh, my glorious God. Pastor, what you, doctor, what you think about smoking marijuana? I don't have no discussion on marijuana. That's not my culture. I don't have no opinion on it. My opinion is I don't use it because I have a high that comes from the most high. My high comes from the glory of God. When I pray and his glory fills my life, I don't need no marijuana, no cocaine, no sexual illicit behavior. Hallelujah. No heroin, no LSD, no PCP, no drug could give me this high. No drug could take me here like the presence of Almighty God, the glory of God. Nothing can give me a boost through the week more than his glorious presence with me and with you. 
Jesus, I pray this. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, they keep giving him glory. The Lord said, when you pray, pray for the culture of the glory of God. Some of you and I are murmurous and complainers, and the Lord is saying, this week, woo, open your mouth and release worship. This week, instead of murmuring and complaining and cussing out the children and cussing out the dog and cussing out the animals, so get ready, I'm about to pray for this glory to come upon your life. Get, re- get worship in your mouth. Usher in the glory of God. Let your culture be a culture of worship. Let your culture be a culture of praise. Let your culture be a culture of thanksgiving. Giving glory to the Lord. Giving praise to the Lord. Giving thanks to the Lord. Use your words. uh, Hallelujah. To bring in prayers that bring the glory in. I don't care how you feel. I'm not going to speak the pain. I'm going to say God is still good. I'm not going to look at my problem. I'm going to look at the promise keeper. I'm not going to look at the problems. I'm going to look at the problem solver. I'm not going to look at my mistakes. I'm going to look at the master. I'm not going to look at my torture. I'm going to look at the teacher. I'm not going to look at my insufficiencies. I'm going to look at the king. The Bible said he will keep those at peace whose mind is stayed on him. I'll say that again. The scripture verse says he will keep your mind at peace. Some of you are so troubled because you're looking at your mistakes. You're looking at your past. You're looking at your resources. You're looking at your bank account. Hallelujah. You're looking at your cupboards. You're looking at your marriage. You're looking at yourself and saying, oh my goodness, look at me. I'll never get out of this. I've failed. But he said, I don't want you looking at that. That's why you keep struggling. You know how I get peace from day to day? I keep my mind on the Lord. He'll keep you at peace whose mind is said to him. I look not to the left or the right. I keep my eyes fixed on him. Hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. And when I do that, my faith is energized. I don't look at my insufficiency. I don't look at my faultiness. I keep my eyes fixed on the faith. I keep my eyes on the one who can save, the one who can deliver, the one who can rescue. I keep looking at the future of even if this old life ends, if this old life collapses tomorrow. I keep looking on the future of paradise, the future of a home that's coming, a future of a heaven and of a new heaven and a new earth and of a new body and of a new future that is greater than this. Hallelujah. As rich as Prince Harry was. Not Prince Harry. What's his name? Prince Philip. Wonderful man. Where is he now? Gone. Out of this life. We pray for him and the family, the Queen's family. But I, I thought about it this week to us. And man, no matter how much money you have, when death comes knocking at your door, no royal doctor can save you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether you're a poor black man in, in the ghettos of South Africa, whether you are, you know, the wealthy man of, of Delhi, living in Delhi or Bombay, or you're the Prince Philip living in the royal palace of Buckingham Palace. When death comes knocking at your door, no amount of money, no amount of prestige, no amount of influence, no amount of anything in this life. It is over. It is done. And only what you do for Christ will have meaning then. Because then you will stand before the same throne. If you don't want to believe this throne now, I'm going to close now. we got to pick up part two of this next week. If you don't want to accept the throne now, hallelujah, if you don't want to stand before the throne now and say, oh, king, I acknowledge you. You are king of kings and lord of lords, Jesus. You are the everlasting king. In your word, you said it. Hallelujah. You said your kingdom is not of this world. You said it. You said it. Hallelujah. In Matthew 6, you said, uh, 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 John 18 and 36, you said your kingdom is not of this world. Your kingdom is, you know what that means? We are, his kingdom is not limited by the resources we have here. Hallelujah. His kingdom is righteous. Uh, don't mind these wicked leaders. Hallelujah. Around the world. Hallelujah. No matter how much they do, none are righteous. Not one. Not a single one. They all are after their own heart. There's only one righteous king. And he is Jesus. There's only one righteous leader who loves all his children. That's Jesus. He can love all of you, black, white, any and all of us. One time, he's our father. He's the only one that truly concerns and cares about us. He's the only one who comes to give us joy and give us peace and give us hope. He's not trying to, you know, judge us and condemn us. 
Yes, he, he doesn't want us to live a certain way because the ways of our life will lead us to destruction. Our own knowledge will lead us to destruction. Hallelujah. Next week, we're going to be talking about piercing and tattoos and righteous living. That's the culture. Righteous words, righteous talking. Hallelujah. How? Uh, Jesus said, when we fast, Matthew 6 and 18, you shouldn't fast for the world to see. When you give, Matthew 6 and 4, stop giving in the public for it to be on social media. That's not kingdom culture. That's greed. That's to promote yourself. You help someone out, you got to put that on Facebook. You post someone bail, you got to put that on Facebook. That's a nasty thing to do. You're not in the kingdom like you should be. You give poor food to the poor. Why are you putting it on TV? Why are you putting it on social media and Facebook? Jesus said not to do that. Why do we keep doing stuff that Jesus tells us not to do? Jesus said if you give your money and your food and your gifts before man to be seen a man, you have your reward. That's it. You won't get nothing from the Lord for it. You got your reward. The people who said, oh, that woman is gift to the poor. That man of God, he's feed the poor. Yeah, and God is saying, I'm disappointed with you, and I'm going to judge you for doing that. The things that we think God are pleased with, when you look in the scripture, it's displeasing. And men, and these men feel because there's some bishop, some pastor, some minister, that, they, 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 that God is pleased with them because people like them. DMX sold 74 million Tupac sold millions of copies. Biggie Small sold millions. Where are they now? Dead and gone. Forgotten. Don't let the devil fool you. Because people love you in one season, they'll hate you the next. Hallelujah. Don't think because people love you mean God is pleased with you. Don't think because people love what you do and call you, you know, you're Mr. Popular or Mrs. Popularity means that God is pleased with your life because he will measure your life against his word not with people like you well they, they like me the people like me the people watch me all the time the people to share i have plenty of facebook following people to share i got a hundred views i got five thousand views the people like what i said and like me oh yeah i know plenty of them who have thousands of views still living a you know ungodly lifestyle i know it know who have hundreds of views because they're going to prophesy some house car line to you who when they get off that sage they have their homosexual lover in the back in the other room do not be deceived by what you see and what you think line your life up I'm getting ready to pray for you line your life up with this word and in the end of the day the Lord who is the righteous judge will judge us according to our obedience or disobedience to this law book. And we're going to be surprised. The Bible said many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't I preach in your name? Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I feed the hungry? Didn't I clothe the naked in your name? And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I don't even know you. Yes, you did all in things, but I don't know you. Because you didn't abide by my law in your private life. You didn't live by it. You didn't tell your family about it. You didn't teach it to my people, yet you did all of those wonderful acts. But you never truly lived this on the inner part. I encourage you today as we get ready to pray. The time of playing is over. The kingdom of God and of Christ Jesus is at hand. Now is the time. The day is the acceptable day of the Lord. I'm not prophesying on my house. You ain't need no more house. You ain't need no more car. You ain't need no turnaround. You need just Christ settle in your heart. So lay where you're free. You and I just need the law of God operating in our lives in every area. We just need to study the law. We need the law and function in our lives. Let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, I want anyone who's on here, I want to pray for you. My prayer is not a vain repetition of words. I want to pray that what you heard today, you begin to walk in this experience. And because I'm praying, it's not going to magically happen. It's going to begin the process. You're going to have to put in the work of seeking the kingdom, studying the laws of God. 
Matter of God, where do you start? I wish you start with Revelation and go to Matthew. Dr. Corley, where do I start? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I studied every word of Jesus. Why don't you start with that? Why don't you go in your concordance and everywhere you see the kingdom of God? If you said to seek the kingdom first, go in your concordance in the back of your book, Google it. Go in a Bible thesaurus and everywhere you see kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, you study that and read that. And you look at the king, King Jesus, and you study every word he says. That's more than enough. You don't need uh, a whole lot of people to watch on YouTube. Just, just get to Jesus. And he's sufficient. When, he, when you didn't know him, then you would say, Lord, is there a book? Is there a tape? Is there some leader that I can study along with? Then we're here to help you. Not lord over you, not control you, not dominate you. We support you and I as we go through this journey. You study with us the scripture. And then when you're finished through the week, when you don't see us, you're studying the scripture for yourself. And then when we get together, we just 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 encouraging one another in fellowship with the Lord. We remove religion. We remove men from out of the place of God. Father, right now, first of all, we need to repent. Lord, this country and and this structure we call church is nothing more than church religion. Help us with something in worship. Lord, we repent. I pray that the leaders give back the body of Christ, the house of God, back to the Lord Jesus Christ. But Lord Jesus, you said to Peter, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, what Peter said, when he said, you are the Christ. I will build my ecclesia, my people. The gates of hell will not prevail against my people. He knows that I am the Christ, the Messiah, the Christos, the Messiah. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the anointed king, the anointed Christ, the Savior. Lord, based on that, we come back to the integrity of your word. I'm tired of hearing just what man said. I want to know what Jesus says. I want to know what's critical. I, I want principles that work in Uganda as it works in Australia. That works in New Zealand as it works in Nassau. You're not a God that is a respected person. What you did for someone in London, you will do for me here in Freeport. And what you did for someone in Switzerland, you will do for someone in, in Swaziland. Because you're a fair and equitable God. And so I know based on that, your word is based on those who obey the laws that you've set forth. To them you will give power. That's it. And authority. Lord, I pray now in the name of Jesus, let your kingdom come upon everyone listening and watching. Let them have a revelation of your kingdom, the culture, the nature, the character of the king. Let it invade our lives, Lord. Let kingdom come. Let heaven invade our minds, our body, our spirit, that which is happening in heaven. The miracles of heaven, the throne room of God in heaven, the glory of heaven, the worship of heaven, peace and joy and hope that's in heaven. Let it come into our lives, let it come into our homes, let it come into our city, let it come into our nation, let peace come in our streets. Let joy fill the hearts of your people. Let righteousness, let integrity, let honesty, let truth be our God. Let it Rise up from among us. Let all we say and do be done for the glory of God alone. Let it not be done for selfish, greedy ambition. Let it not be under deception and lies. Let it be truth. I pray for families today. I pray for children today. Lord, let the homes of our nation and those listening and watching be touched. I speak peace. Hallelujah. I speak the arguments end. I speak the abuse ends. I speak your presence in vain. These homes today. And let corruption in. Let the fighting in. Let the physical, emotional, 
sexual and psychological abuses end. Lord, I know we can pray against it because you said, let your pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. Lord, I pray the eyes of your people be open. Lord, let deception be removed. In the name of Jesus. And if they don't know you, Lord, today I pray that the Everyone listening or watching gets to know you as Lord and Savior today. Shadamando Redesa. And Lord, let them be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Even as in the book of Acts, chapter 1 and 2, you said, Disciples, go to the upper room. And when you go, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and they will receive the Holy Spirit. And they begin to pray in another tongue. Lord, this is it. You said, uh, Paul said, I pray in tongue more than you all. And you came to some disciples and said unto them in the book of Acts, I think 18, and said, How do you receive the Holy Spirit since you believe? And they said to the Apostle Peter, we have not heard of the Holy Spirit. And you, Peter, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit through Peter, you know, breathe upon them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And they receive it with the evidence of praying in tongues. Hallelujah. That is the culture of heaven. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit. Luke 17 and 21. The kingdom of God is within you and I. The kingdom lives in you and I because we have the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live right. We cannot talk right. We cannot speak right. We cannot think right. We cannot live pure. I say today, receive ye the Holy Spirit. And with power, receive the Holy Spirit. Do not receive not the doctrine of man, but receive the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And in have that power, go forth with power. Power to live righteous. Power to overcome the forces of darkness. Power to live according to this word. Power to interpret the word of God. Receive you today power from on high. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. I speak power. Wherever you are listening and watching, I speak by the mighty name of Jesus that a supernatural power invades your home. Hallelujah. I'm praying for you today. I don't know what it is. By word of knowledge, the Lord is invading. That's it. Some of you are feeling the tangible presence. If that's you today, lift up your hands and receive it. Receive that. That what you're feeling now is the power of the Holy Spirit. He's come. He's come to fill you. Receive him. Say, Holy Spirit, I receive you. Say, Jesus, I receive you as Lord. Come on, receive it. Lord Jesus, I receive your word today. I receive your healing today. I receive your deliverance today. I receive your power today. Fill me with the truth of your word that I will never be the same. Woo! This is going to be the greatest week. This, I speak it. This is going to be the great speak of your life and mine. Something miraculous is about to happen. Come on, come on, come on. I'm about to minister prophetically, quickly, for two minutes. Something miraculous is about to hit your life. I see the Lord. He is removing some hindrances to your life. And the Lord is bringing favor into your life, be you. The Lord is bringing the right connection and the right people. Those that have taken advantage and abused and rejected you. God said, I'm bringing people who are probably coming to promote you. God has said, I'm bringing people who are going to exalt you and lift you up. God said, I'm bringing people who are going to support you. The Lord said, that miracle that you've been looking for, the answer is coming. The answer is coming. The answer is coming. The answer to that prayer is being released. The answer to prayer, I'm just saying with the Holy Spirit tell me. The Holy Spirit will show me your answers be released. Young lady, that prayer you've been praying for. Yes, you. The Lord said that prayer is being released right now. Receive it and thank you by faith. Young man, that job request is being released right now. That job, yes, in the midst of a pandemic. I say the Lord saying, I'm going to create supernatural jobs for you. Hallelujah. When they said there's no more jobs and no job in the economy, here comes the Lord. The Lord said, when they said, no clients are going to come. I'm going to send clients to bless your business. Oh, hallelujah. 
Woo, glory to God. But most of all, the Lord said, you're going to walk with me. And I'm going to walk with you. You're going to be my son, my daughter, and I'm going to be your father. You're going to be co-heirs with me, and I'm going to be your king. I'm going to be your Lord. I'm going to be your deliverer. I'm going to be your hope. I'm going to be your reward. Call on somebody. Oh, call on somebody. The Lord said, I'm going to be your reward. All that you've done, no one saw, and you did it in the secret. The Lord said, I'm going to reward you openly. I'm about to be your great reward, said the Lord. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to bring those quiet prayers you prayed. I'm going to bring the answer open and publicly. And man will know, Miss Williams. Man will know that I am the Lord your God. Mary, get ready. Ready, see For your favor to flow upon your life. That which you've done in a secret. I'm talking to somebody. Come on, get on here quickly. I'm about to release just for 60 more seconds. The word of the Lord. Some of you, you've done some things in secret. You said, Lord, it seemed like I've been overlooked. I'm speaking to you, young lady. God said, I'm going to re reward you openly, Mary. I'm going to reward. This is the word of the Lord. Over the next seven days, look for an open reward. Not because you want it and for people to see. But just because your heart is being so pure. The Lord said, get ready for open reward. Hallelujah. Rabbi Shanda, let it go. Sunday, in a Monday, Williams, 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 get ready for the hand of the Lord. Lift up your hands wherever you are as you are praying, as you are worshiping. Somebody begin to worship the Lord. As you are worshiping, the Lord is putting his hand upon some of you. Some of you are feeling like something on your head, and that's you shall glory. The hand of the Lord is like you feel you feel his presence on you. If you're not too ashamed, shall glory. I know it's you. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I'm pressing, pressing off of you. The weight of heaviness, the weight of burden, the weight of shame, the weight of guilt, the weight of religion, the weight of trying to please everyone. Yes, you young lady, you've been trying to please everyone. You've been trying to please everyone. But the Lord said, I'm breaking off that expectation. Even your in-laws and your uh, husband's family. I hear somebody say, husband's family. There's somebody listening. Your, the, your husband's family has put such an expectation on you. It has almost messed you up. But the Lord is saying today, I'm breaking that off you. You're going to finally be free to be who God has called you to be. And to walk in the purposes the Lord has called you to walk in. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody worship. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Somebody, oh God, Rebeshia. There's about five people watching this. I wish you get them on quickly. Quickly, there are about five people. I hear the Lord saying, in the midst of a pandemic, get ready for business. Hallelujah. I've seen five, hallelujah, supernatural creative ideas that's coming. You better grab it, 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 grab it and walk in it. The Lord said about five of you, hallelujah, hallelujah, supernatural business idea. And the Lord said, do it, it shall not fail. You're wondering if it's going to fail and work in this time of pandemic. But the Lord is saying, it shall not fail, but it shall prosper. Five business items. Step out on faith. Step out and study. Step out and research it. Step out and do it. It's going to shift the finances of your family. You said, Lord, we need extra money. The Lord said, I put something in your hands. What about share Somebody on here, you are you can make cookies. You're good with baking. And you don't have to show your face. The Lord said, I'm going to cause your bakery business to explode. Hallelujah. Young man, young woman, get ready for your business to explode. I see someone gifted. Gifted, gifted. Gifted musician. Get ready. People are going to be calling for your gifting and your sound. Hallelujah. But only remember the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Do not compromise the culture of the kingdom of God in your life. Do not compromise the righteous stand you must take. But the Lord says, as quick as you get it, as quick as you will lose it. Somebody has a son or daughter, you're musically inclined. Hallelujah. They are musically gifted. Get ready for God to use them in an amazing way. Don't stop them. 
It is the hand of the Lord, and that musical direction is the gift of God upon their life. Let him flourish in it. Ooh, God, I'm done. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. I bless you. I bless you all in Jesus' name. You're not counted out. You're counted in. Get back up. Hold your chest back and get your fists ready. Get ready to fight this week. But the battle won't be hard. But the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. And he's going to bring you victory. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. Again, Dr. Kilafa Kali, I don't know if Shalewa will want to say anything before we go. I want to encourage you to get these books. These are books of my greatest. Shalewa and I, we, we poured out our studies and so much resources to make these available for you. Go to Amazon, purchase it. People around the world are buying it. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. Most of what I taught and so much more are packed in these. Hallelujah. I, it will take me a year teaching every day to get through one of these books. But you can sit down, go with your Bible, go on Amazon, invest in your life, buy it for a friend, buy it for your children, buy it for your husband, buy it for your spouse, go out there, buy it, and if you bought it, call me, I want to pray with you, and I want to bless your life when you do get it. It's called The Kingdom, Experience Heaven on Earth by Shalewa Shale and I, beautiful cover. The power, this is going to teach you how to move in the supernatural power of God, and the glory of God, and I'm telling you, and the special bonus pack, the kingdom part two, experience heaven on earth. And let me tell you, as much as we study, we know this, we're still learning. So this doesn't mean any way that I, you know, I'm still learning. I can't wait to get on the next series. I want you to have those books. Or if you want to contact me, please contact me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Irma. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Bebo. Thank you, uh, Mary. Uh, guess what? If you want these books, please contact us on uh, you can go to www. Shalewa, put it there. Thank you, darling. www.kingdomtrilogy.com to see more about what this book is saying, how it's going to bless your life. Uh, if you need us to get it here anywhere in Freeport or Nassau, we'll be happy, hallelujah, to get these books to you. This is a life work. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, we just want to bless you. If you want to partner with this ministry, contact us. We have PayPal. Uh, we don't ask for money because we just love teaching the word. But if the Lord is touching your heart, you want a blessing, tell you what, go ahead, buy this book. That'll be a great blessing. Every book that you buy is a contribution into the ministry that we have here. Shalewa, just put Power and Glory TV there as well. Uh, if you want to follow us, we have tons of teachings on Power and Glory TV. TV. That's a 24-7, 365, our own network. And if you're interested in joining our network and being a part, please let us know. We'd love to have you on. You can also go to our YouTube, K-A-M-I, Kami Bahamas. There are hundreds, literally, of teachings like this and many other, many more. Uh, we just want to love you. We want to bless you. If you want to bless this ministry, contact us for any gift of $100 or more. We'll send these to you. Hallelujah. And we'll also put a special gift, this ministry. And I'm telling you, everyone that sold, a gentleman sold money last week and his life is turned around. There was another person who called me and said, come. I went to his house and he, he just blessed the ministry with a few hundred dollars sold into the ministry. His life, he's believing God for a miracle. I've seen his life turn around. Hallelujah. It's something spiritual when you bless a ministry and helps that ministry to take the gospel around the world and the Lord blesses your life. Hallelujah. There's another person who called who blessed the ministry. Every week people are calling to bless the ministry and we appreciate it. It helps us to come online, do our production, our editing, publication. It helps us to help ministries in these various nations around the world that we support every month. If you go on our page, you'll see people from around the world help some of them spiritually, physically, and financially. So any gift, uh, over $100, we'll send these, we'll email these to you, autograph these books, and email it. We'll send you a crown pendant, a beautiful, I don't have it right here with me, to bless your life. Contact us. Go to our website, KAMG Bahamas. My wife is going to put that up there. KAMGBahamas.com. That's a website. You can make a donation on there. You can you know, send me a message. Uh, on our telephone numbers that are on that page or you can contact us through Facebook and we will definitely get to you or just go online, buy these and make a donation 
all donations would be made. If you're writing a check, write it out to Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International for that day as well. We'd be happy to receive it from you. And I believe in God, even as I sow. I'm done. But Shalewa and I, she keeps asking me when you're going to stop sowing. I never stop giving. Praise God. And I'm not going to tell you who and what and where. That's not what God the Lord wants me to do. I'll never brag and talk about it. But I never stop because I've tapped into the principle of the kingdom. As long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest. Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. Shall men give to your bosom. And they brought all they had and laid it at the apostles' feet. Hallelujah. Cast your bread upon the water, for it shall return to you back several ways. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. It's better to give than to receive. I can tell you about 50 scriptures out of the top of my head on giving. I know too much about giving. I know too much about blessing. I know too much about sowing financially into different areas. Because it comes back when it's a good soil. So if the Lord is touching you, we will gladly receive it. And I want to partner with you and you partner with us. And we're not going to take your money and resources. We're going to bless you back with something tangible. Because I believe in relationship. And I believe ministry is about relationship, not about sucking the people and not giving them anything back in return. If you bless us in our ministry, we will bless you and your life and your family, not only with prayer, but something that's tangible that will change your life. God bless you. Dr. Kilafu Foley here, thanking you so much for staying to the end. It was long, but it's worth the investment in your life and mine. We love you. Thank you so much for joining. Your time means so much to us. Come on, it makes us feel so good. Make sure to tune back in. We're going to be finishing part two of this. If you like this ministry uh, and other materials, stay with us. We're going to be journeying through the rest of this year. Every Sunday, sometime through the week, we'll let you know. We're going to journey through this year together by the grace of God. We're going to help you get through this pandemic as we've been doing for the last year and a half. After Dorian, into the pandemic to today. We've been on consistently online. Never ask anybody for a single dollar because we want to bless your life. Hallelujah. We don't do ministry for money. We preach the gospel and money comes to us in so many different ways. Resources. And the Lord takes care of us. But we want to walk through you, with you, in this journey, one on one, in your life as we, you walk with us. God bless you. See you next week. Amen.